has now deteriorated into a cliched, let's be honest, boring snooze fest that is in dire need of a knight in shining armor. Television ratings, downward spiral. Interview buy rates, plummeting. Mainstream acceptance, non-existent. And reactions of the live crowds, complete and utter silence. You're silent because you're embarrassed to be here. Honestly, I'm embarrassed for you. And the reason why you're embarrassed is because of the steady stream of uninteresting, untalented, mediocre sports entertainers who you're forced to cheer for and care for. No wonder you're not cheering. You can care less about every single... All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Monday Night Raw Review. And uh, we're here with, uh, we got Jake DeMarco, we got the whole chats on, the whole chats uh, feeling weird. I heard specifically that everybody in the chat is out of their goddamn mind. And uh, that's okay, because there was ever a time to be out of your mind, I think it's, I think it's this time. Bobby Lashley looked like a beast tonight, that was great. His entrance was phenomenal. So uh, shout out to Bobby Lashley's entrance tonight. Epic looking with the the darkness, the the lights, the glimmering, the the lightning that they had going on. I mean, dude, Bobby Lashley's entrance was goddamn fire. I got hyped up for it, and on multiple occasions tonight, WWE showed that their pyro was better than the ring exploding last night in AEW which was either coincidental or just ironically hilarious. I don't know which one it was, but either way, multiple times, WWE flexed their pyro muscles. So there you go there. You know, initially, the only other thing I got to say is I'm going to, I might, I might flip out about the whole Sheamus and Drew thing, because last week, the one reason, the thing I said to Jake was, and this was the thing we were worried about, right? Here's the thing we were worried about. First, we said, you know what? We like it. They, they, they had a knockdown, drag out, crazy match. That's a great ending to that story. All right, they're done with that story. Thank God. But the one thing that crept in on my mind was Jake said that, you know, it was this long match at the beginning and then and something, something or other. And I basically said something like, well, you know what, Jake? At the beginning of every Monday Night Raw, a lot of times they have this big knockdown, drag out match. So maybe it was just coincidence that they were put in that spot, and that wasn't the blow-up match. And that's what we were worried about, that it yeah, wasn't. that was our main concern. That's not the ending, you know. Be only because it was in that spot. If it had been in the main event or been in the middle, we would have been like, all right, it's definitely over. Yeah, yeah, then I would have assumed it was done. But because the way it opened and the timing, and we saw it tonight, they're far from done. And they had another that's right. It, it, match. it looks like it's WrestleMania or something. Like, yeah, is this That's the thing, but they shouldn't be facing each other at all. They should be meeting at Mania finally. This is the, who's going to want to see the match even at Fastlane at this point. Well, that's the what's, point. Is what's like entertaining. I mean, we've seen them fight twice now. Once in a hardcore setting, so we've seen them use weapons and ladders and chairs and stairs. And you know, it's like so unless they come up with something really crazy as a stipulation, you know, it, it, what else are we going to get? And I, I, I liked Bobby Lashley's entrance. He looked great. He looked like a legit badass. I wish they would decide how to spell his nickname. Last week it's the Almighty with two L's. You know, this week it's it's or last week it's one L. This week it's two L's. They keep going back and forth, but that's Vince not being able to make a decision. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. But what were they doing tonight? They made Braun look. And they must be listening, I, I'm telling you, because we've said for ages, you especially have touted how much of a moron Braun Strowman is. Yeah, how weird is Tonight, this? the whole point of their WrestleMania build is to show how much of a moron Braun Strowman is. I mean... It's amazingly horrible. It, it, I'm, I'm astounded that they're actually going with this angle to make him look like a dip. You know, they first, want him to look like a total idiot. Well, first, I thought Shane was having a stroke. Yeah, it seemed that way. Or it was for, so what? underwhelming and very bizarre. Yeah, no, he really felt like he kept repeating stuff, and it was like weird. He was stammering and stuttering, and I, but but he literally made Braun, you know, the whole time look like an idiot, 
And then Shane runs out there, gets right in his face to say, I'm sorry. So initially, before we even had any of the other stuff happen where he made Braun look even more stupid, just tonight alone, it already showed that Shane is not afraid of Braun at all. And someone of that size and stature, you should be fearful of constantly. Everyone should be running from him. When he walks into catering, people should book. You know, you should be afraid of Braun Strowman. Well, I mean, Shane did run from him. After the fact, just to make him look stupid. Yeah, but he, you know what? He, he I don't never know. actually left, but he wasn't afraid of him. He was toying with him. He's not scared of Braun. He even, he even finished the promo off saying, so stupid, because he wanted to make him look like an idiot. Like well, I, I think he's physically, I think he, I got off, I got that he physically is scared of him physically, but mentally he's not scared of him. I mean, because he cut his promo from the ramp really far away. Like, okay, I'm yeah, not I took near that more you. as just him toying with him because he got right in his face initially, and Braun could have struck him then. No, so I don't even, really take Shane as fearful. Yeah, I just take Shane as being manipulative and really going ahead and, and just toying with him in every way, shape, and form. I don't think Shane's afraid at all, or at least they didn't really make it seem that way to me. I mean, the guy pretended to run away so that he could... Get just Braun. so he could bait Braun and then make him think he left to, to make him look stupid. Now when Braun watches it back or if anybody sees it, that's why Shane even said, so stupid. Like, oh, that's how easy yeah, it is to Yeah, but I think he you? is scared of him because if he wasn't scared of him, he would have punched him in the face in the ring. That would have been not scared of him. They still have time to build. I don't agree media. with you on that. But I do agree that Braun is a tard and they, he's been an idiot for three years. I've been saying it. Shane, you well, stole my gimmick, Shane. one person that's ever acted afraid of Braun? You know, that's the problem. They, well, people act still, afraid of him, but then he's an idiot. When has anybody acted afraid of him that, that's been substantial or lasting? Besides his debut? When Shane literally just acted Roman afraid out? of him. He just acted afraid of him. How he, did, I don't see anything of fear there, though. I really don't. I don't see any bit of fear. I see him screwing, bullying, and toying with him. The Miz was, wasn't the Miz scared of him? I mean, like, everybody, there's been people scared of him. He's just an idiot. Like, Since they've started making him look like a total moron, I don't think he's had anybody show any sort of fear or worry. Even Pierce was kind of like, oh, and then suspended him in the ring. It didn't matter, you know? N no one backs down to Braun Strowman. He's not a monster. He's, he's just, he's a chump. Well, he is a chump. I don't, I don't think that it's much different, though, than another big guy. People don't seem no, to be No, no, I know, but they just guys. don't treat him like monsters. They, when you have somebody that's that, you know, much of a... Uh, physical specimen for lack of a better word i mean yeah, they the treat almost be, like that they treat almost like that they treat almost like oh my god that I mean, guy's he's not really a wrestler though so that's yeah. not entertaining but i mean i guess the he's point just uh, he's not even a, really a manager at this point he's just a statue he's a tall statue yeah but he's stupid. that's all almost is my only problem with braun is that he's just stupid he's been stupid for three years they made him stupid and he's a big scary guy but he's stupid big scary <laughs> muscle guy but he's dumb I like what Gordon said. You know, we, Shane gives Braun a concussion at Mania. He comes back as <laughs> Professor Strowman. New character. He's a genius. I love it. No, honestly, it's just I don't view Shane as fearful at all. I just think like he's making him look like an idiot. I don't think he's scared one bit of, of Braun. That, to me, didn't look like fear at all. That, that looked like just total bullying. He looked like he was bullying Braun Strowman. Yeah, I think he like, was. I'm going to screw with you and make you look like an idiot. Yeah, because he's so smarter I, I than see, him. If he was afraid of him, he wouldn't have toyed with him and ran and, and did any of that. He would have avoided that and just apologized and backed down. If Shane McMahon was truly afraid, he would have gone ahead. And, and I know Shane's not supposed to show fear. It's Vince's son. You know, he's got the, the grapefruit gonads. I, I get that. But Braun should still be taken as a serious threat. And that's the problem with Braun. Well, I not think just he did tonight, take him, though. Forever. Because you can outsmart him. He's an idiot. So, like, you don't need to take him like that. Like the point Exactly. But it just shows you're still undermining him. You're making him look bad. Well, there was no benefit to Braun. He's already ever. an idiot. That, that's my point. Yeah, I mean, he's already an idiot. There, there is no benefit. I hope. But he that, shouldn't be an idiot. Is my point here? He should be. He, he shouldn't sucks. be a moron. He sucks. He's, he's, he's the massive man that's pretty damn good in the ring, and and they make him talk like an idiot. But he's got a very deep voice. If they coach him to say the right things, he could be a real monster. Yeah, they but just, he's again. But he's been. Get nothing. But he's been an idiot for three years, so you can't fix that now. It's too late. You he's can't. Stupid. It's too late. He's done for. There's that's no way I can. Exactly. But that's this? exactly why Shane is making him look like a bitch. He'll probably. Oh, I know. I, I'm not saying, but it's just, it's it shows how bad their creative decisions are. They've ruined someone who is the easiest person to book for, really. The big guys are not hard to book for most times. Go in, look strong, leave. That's it. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's as simple as it gets. That, he, that's he's literally gonna, the fundamentals of wrestling. Go in, win, go home, collect paycheck. And he's going to win. Braun's going to beat Shane. That's I don't the, think he's going to beat Shane. I will bet you right now he will not beat Shane. Shane I hope doesn't so. lose. I hope you're right. Cause Shane, oh, Shane lost the taker. Oh, God, you know, but but look at that. He beat the shit out of Miz. He beat Owens. He beat, Shane does not lose. Shane is going in there, and he is going to embarrass Braun Strowman. Mark my words. I hope so. Because Braun Strowman sucks. I, I'm, I'm betting on it right now. Gut feeling. I'm telling you, it sounds crazy and ludicrous. I know, but I don't see Braun getting come up. It's maybe down the road he'll beat Shane, but they're going to keep this going. This is going to go past Mania, and this is going to be terrible. Oh, it already, yeah, this, this, no doubt it's It's terrible. just going to get worse and worse and worse. Because who cares about Braun? Like, but who cares about any of this stuff? It's right really now? all for Shane, I think. I think it's just to put Shane on the Mania card. As, as much as AEW had disaster moments last night, I'm still curious what's going to happen. I still want to know where we're going to go with these storylines. And Right now, there is so much intrigue, good, bad, or indifferent. There's still people talking about, the barbed wire match and you know what it, it, up until the the interference and all the shit it wasn't a bad match like you said just everybody remembers the conclusion but as we said last night and even calming down and not being so emotional about it yeah they can fix this this is salvageable this is a, a it's a blunder no doubt but luckily it happened in such a way that it was well acted with eddie they can save this they, they can say, uh, we, we came up with so many excuses for them last night. They're clearly going with Kenny's an idiot, or it was just his plan all along not to blow them up. But there's a lot of intrigue with AEW. Wednesday, the inner circle, what's going to happen? Is Sammy Guevara going to show up? You know, there's questions, and we don't have all the answers. What's next with the Young Bucks? There's nothing that I have to wonder about Raw tonight. There is literally no questions for next week's Raw. And that's the go-home show for Fastlane. I have not one thing that I care for. There is not one angle, one match, one iota of a thing here that matters to me. And that's terrible. It's WrestleMania season. They should be building up these huge matches so people are excited to buy tickets next week to WrestleMania. You have to go fight scalpers for $5,000 to go to this COVID freaking ridden show for what? For nothingness. I mean, I hope that... Shane and Braun do a Texas death match, exploding death match. Yeah, right. I mean, at this point in time, might as well strap them all with C4. Would have been really funny if they I still had like a... my give them an assault rifle match. Have Braun and you Shane know, stand at opposite ends, give them both a clip, and just whoever hits each other the most wins. That's a match. When did the fight? When did the fiend get set on fire? Was that January? That was the December show. Oh, that's too bad because I was going to say, you know, that would have won. For craziest thing of the year, up until and I thought the Texas Death Match in AEW would beat it, and it didn't. You know, AEW no, didn't no, do setting it. Braun on fire was La still dude, more. Dude, last night when um, Eddie Kingston, when when someone made the video you sent me, and I haven't seen. I wish it was longer, where he yeah. where he covers him up, dude. When the when the Titanic music kicks in, <laughs> it's so perfect, here, and the sparklers are going off. Holy shit, dude. I almost died. I showed it to Leah. Oh, yeah. I made Leah watch like some of the match to see what the context of the whole thing was. I did the she, same thing to Courtney. Yeah. Oh, my God. She was fucking I was dying. like, I have to show you the ending to this. And then uh, I did actually record for your Patreon the first episode of Unapologetic and Completely Random. I had Luke Rojas on oh. as my uh, first guest as a kind of like a trial kickoff episode. So I'll get that to you and uh, we can get that up. But it's, it's, it's not usually going to be wrestling talk, but we just couldn't avoid it today. It was, you know, I had Luke on as my first guest and I, I couldn't avoid it. So it's kind of, uh, you know, timely to deal with AEW. But for future episodes, it's not going to be just wrestling talk. It's going to be about everything, thus completely random. But that'll be coming nice. to Patreon soon enough. So more content to Joe's Patreon. Look at that. I like it. I like it. Hell yeah. Drew's got a new episode with Jesse, too. That's coming up soon, too, as yeah, well. Yeah, that's coming out. You know, Off the Rails is always great. Um, so much but, more. Yeah, so they... they um, I, 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 I'm not trying to be... I know I'm being a bit hyperbolic. Oh, it's the worst that, But But really, I mean, there's nothing, honestly, for me to care about tonight. Lashley's the champ. Okay, I like him as champion. Good. Let's let's have them keep building him. Is he going to yeah. go against Lashley Drew? Lashley was great. That, the, the, the that, best that's thing kind of, of the But I'm not curious what's going to happen next week with him. Like, there's, there's no lead into for next week. It's just... He's going to be the champ, okay? But but there's no what if, there's no wonder, there's no there, there's nothing to, to to give you a reason to tune in for. What if Drew and Sheamus face each other at WrestleMania and Brock Lesnar shows up to face Bobby Lashley? 
it, it's kind of seeming like that. And, and you hear that Vince is changing up the plans for Mania left and right because people knew about the card before he wanted to reveal it. He was upset with that. And he's not happy with the reaction that he's getting so far. So he wants to make it bigger and better than ever. You keep hearing on the advertisements that we're back in business. You know, that's his big tagline for this year since they missed WrestleMania essentially with fans last year. But, I mean, really, you know, we had the stuff. The, the first hour was just not great. We had, the, we had the match with Bobby Lashley. So Lashley comes out looking like a million bucks. The backstage stuff, all of the Hurt Business walking up. They're the tag champs. Lashley's the WWE champ. MVP, they look like a million bucks. They look legit. I'm like, damn, that's a stable. That was Looks awesome. Looks great. The almighty uh, a graphic that comes when he's got the, the ring pyro, you know, that, that's in the stands around the Thunderdome. Yeah. That was a great addition. All of the pyro looked really good tonight. Like I said, WWE's pyro is usually top-notch regardless, but it, it definitely felt like a tip of the hat to AEW. Granted, the Miz match, you knew Miz even cut a decent promo beforehand as well. So, like, the setup to this wasn't bad. But it's just not believable with Miz. You know he's not going to beat Bobby Lashley. And in this match, I thought it was 15 minutes long. It was nine minutes, Joe. It just went on way too long. You go through a commercial. You had commercials beforehand. Oh, yeah. Now you're, you're halfway through the first hour. We've got one match, and it was a pointless match because you knew Bobby Lashley was never at risk of losing that title. Oh, yeah. You, it was, that was the one thing was like, okay, well, we know he's just going to beat him. But what I liked about it was the entrance. That's all I liked. Everything else was like, okay, we know what's happening. So, so the highlight of this entire night for me was two things. Honestly, two things. Was the entrance for Bobby Lashley. I like that. I can't yep. wait to see how they pulled it off at Mania. That's going to be legit. And two, I liked how Drew McIntyre, again, for like the third time in a row, I believe this is now, reacted he didn't act like a, a, a typical baby face that loses his title and like, shucks, we'll get him next time, guys. He was pissed. He was angry. And he called out Lashley right away, and he's like, I'm the one that's the only true challenger. You know, I went through five, five former champions in the Elimination Chamber, and then Sheamus comes out and starts kicking his ass. But I like Drew being real. He did this a few weeks ago. He was pissed off. You know, same thing now. It's a continual uh, bit of attitude for him that that makes him relatable. I like this. It's it's really well done. Yeah, it was. Um, Excuse me. Uh, Drew, Drew was Drew was great. Good. Sheamus and Drew were were good again in the match. It's just like I don't want stop showing me this. So now what are they going to do? Yeah, have don't another show match it. Save this. If you're going to do it, save it. Yeah. I, why do I want to watch? <laughs> unless they're going to have a death, a Texas death match. What the hell are we going to see? That's going to exactly. be better. But at this point in time, we, we've gone through this now again. We could have had them at Rumble, Elimination Chamber, and now Fastlane as well. And we still have no pay-per-view match with these two, but they want to put it on Raw. And then you have them... Last week, I loved the ending when they did the, the Claymore slash, you know, Broke Kick versus and the, and the Broke Kick loss. So the Claymore took out Sheamus. Awesome ending. This week with the stairs running at each other, it was the uh, fight from Step Brothers. It was it was ridiculous. Uh, somebody actually <laughs> sent us the YouTube clip of that. I got to look up who sent it, and um, it, it, I just couldn't stop laughing at that point because it was just it's so true with them doing the double knockout. It was Curtis Butler, so thank you, Curtis. Yeah, he sent us the, the <laughs> freaking clip of Step Brothers where they're knocking each other both out, and it's like you know the exact same thing, running at each other with the ch the chairs, and I'm like, oh, or the stairs, excuse me. Not a not a not a great ideal ending to that. Honestly, I know they want to keep both guys looking strong, but they went to Drew. They asked if he could continue. They continued the match. Then they went to Sheamus, and Sheamus couldn't continue, so they stopped the match. So doesn't Drew win anyways? I would yeah, think I that understand. that would be the case. So why have them both knock out if Drew's going to win so then you can go ahead and protect Drew? Like It's just it doesn't make sense. I don't know what they're doing. I What's the point of uh, making us both scared that they're both hurt or whatever? Like, yeah, I don't understand like, that either. I don't know. All of tonight did not make sense. The stuff with, with Lana, again, yeah. that was really confusing to, to go ahead and have them. Uh, all the stuff with Orton and Styles, like I get they had to build up a match just to have for the main event. 
But that's the other the thing about the main event is the whole main event. All I thought about was okay, who cares? Because like it's going to be a fiend thing at the end or whatever. Exactly. So you, uh, that's the point again. So you know that uh, you know we're not going to get a finish to, to, to Sheamus and Drew again because they're keeping this feud going. You know that Bobby Lashley's not losing. You know that the fiend or Alexa Bliss are going to do something. So the match is going to end with some screwy finish there. You know that um, Retribution never wins ever. And they're not going to win a title, you know, against Riddle. So, so, so there's just no intrigue, interest, or, or care to any of these creatively booked matches, as we should say. All of it is, and then they had Shane, you know, have multiple segments. Those dragged on with Braun. Uh, what are they doing? Reginald was the reason that Naomi and Lana lost. So instead of, I know he's kind of had a breakup with Carmella, but not really, and and. You know, she kind of fired him on SmackDown, said she was done with him because she was mad, but I guess he is done with her entirely because now he's working with the women's tag champs. Uh, Reginald's a shitty character to begin with, and and now he can just go to for, to Raw? What happened to the SmackDown roster? Is he signed to anything, or is he if he's just a uh, manager? God knows at this point. And, and why did he align himself with Shayna and Nia, of all people? And Because they're the... Hey, Joe. Oh. I like the Monday Night Raw. Do you like the Monday Night Raw? <laughs> I do like the Monday Night Raw, Pasharo. What's up, man? <laughs> and then worse bucks. than that, I again, you have the Hurt Business lose. <laughs> Shelton Benjamin gets beat by distraction by the New Day, who aren't the tag champs. Right. They're not holding titles. Why are you, again, WWE, so obsessed with having your champions lose non-title matches? It doesn't build intrigue. It doesn't make it. It's just more of the same people who are going to inevitably fight fighting before they get to the fight. Well, that's that. Yeah, exactly. Stop so you're it. just holding off of the actual match. You're trying to get a holding pattern put in, and then even worse than that, it the distraction finish is so overused. How many times you know you can't come up with anything else here? That's the only way you can do this. So I, I'm sorry. Far. I know I sound, but no, I, it's sh- ridiculous. Someone, please it's, tell me something good on the show. Besides what I listed, besides Drew's conversation into the mic, the, whoever they have new backstage is horrific. Like, look at this, look that at the, guy Jake. Is a let me robot. Let me give everybody a good example of what I'm t- what we're talking about, which I think people everybody knows, but maybe there's a couple people that don't understand, and maybe we just need to explain anyway. Bottom line is, Jade in AEW, Jade in AEW comes out, cuts a promo on Cody. Jade in AEW says the Shack and her are gonna tag. Blah blah blah. Jade attacks Brandy Rhodes. Jade cuts another promo. Jade attacks Cody Rhodes, and then J- and then um, uh, Red Velvet shows up, and they all have a brawl. And then I I think that maybe there was one other thing I'm missing, but the bottom line is this goes on for a while, right? There's eight weeks of buildup, eight I think eight weeks of buildup, which is a little bit long. And even during the buildup, we said, "Wow, this buildup is pretty long." And oh, the, the the opponents have changed because of Brandy being pregnant. But you know, okay, I'm getting a little tired of it. We need to get to this match. When is it going to happen? Then it does happen, and here comes Shaq, who's also been doing promos for weeks, and Cody, and here they come, Shaq and Jade, and it feels exciting. And then Cody and uh, Red Velvet, and it feels exciting. But what WWE seems to do with just about everything is give you the same thing every week. So if it's a match, you get Sheamus and Drew have match. Sheamus and Drew have another match. Sheamus and Drew have another match. Sheamus and Drew decide to have a stipulation thing happen. And then Sheamus and Drew uh, have a match at a pay-per-view. And it's like by the time the match at the pay-per-view comes, you're like, Jesus, fuck, I've seen this 70 times already. Fuck! And, like, even one of the Raws was better than the match they have tonight on the pay-per-view. And if you want to look at things the other way and say, well, what about... Nah, this is more comparable to Randy Orton and The Fiend. Okay, I agree. I think it is a little more comparable to that in a way. Because, but like you said, Joe, this this feud... But every week been... it's the same thing with Alexa. Like, guess what? He's cu- It's happening. Guess what? It's oh, happening. Oh, yeah. Guess what? It's no happen- doubt. But, but you just brought up a great point, too, about the Hurt Business. And, you know, and you're saying how matches are, are the same and same. We've been having the Hurt Business via, you know, tag champion feud going against New Day since the draft right, in October. Right. Here they go again. They're the New Day again. came in as tag champs because they switched the, the belts with, with the Street Profits. Remember, they just traded titles. Where are the Street Profits? Nothing. 
They're on SmackDown doing nothing at this point in time, pretty much. They're not the tag champs anymore, so, like, you know, whatever. But eh, the Hurt Business go ahead. They win the titles at, I think it was TLC in December from the New Day, and then they've had it since then. But but they've been feuding since October. Right. That's six months of this going on, and it's still going who wants to see this anymore? I, I don't even. I lost count in how many matches we've had at this point in time. I mean, this is this is ridiculous. This is awful. The new day, you know, they've had six hundred and one title reigns, you know, and just with the raw titles, six hundred one days. They don't need any more days with the raw titles. Let the hurt business find somebody new to face off with. Okay, and, and Xavier Woods is going to be busy soon when G four starts, so Kofi can go back to being a single star. I don't. Yeah, uh, Holy Moment makes a, a good point too. Do you think that repeat matches are more frequent since there's no house shows? I know you're, you're trying to play devil's advocate, but that's a good point too because they usually test out feuds at house shows and then they see what the crowd responds to, and if the crowd likes it, they go with it on TV. So since they haven't had that form of audience feedback, I think that's why things are so much worse as well. Vince needs to hear the booze audibly to get it through his head at least a little bit. Um. What are we looking? What are the women looking like for the title on Raw? We got Oscar and Charlotte. It, it looks like it's going to be Oscar and Charlotte at Mania, and you know Charlotte got her or Oscar, excuse me, got her teeth knocked out, so she's been away since she had that injury. But um, they showed it last week when when you were away, and it was a brutal injury. I mean, I'm glad they showed it in a slow motion. It was painful as it was to see. They they do make her look a little bit more <clears throat> of a badass, but yeah. So I would. Um uh, yeah, just Charlotte and Oscar again. We've already seen that at Mania. It wasn't great then. It's not going to be great now. I'm sure. Sadly, it could I have be okay. no interest in Oscar. They have ruined Oscar for me. I I I loathe oh, her yeah. at this point. The dancing around, acting like it. It just I hate everything that she stands for at this point. And I shouldn't because I NXT Oscar was great, but yeah, um, we've gone through this though. I don't know if Becky will be back by Mania either. We've heard so many conflicting things. It looks like we're going to get. Uh, Rhea Ripley up before Mania. Originally, we heard no, not till the week after Mania she'll be there to go ahead and, and make her debut and come against Charlotte. Now it looks like they might not be going back on the road just yet, so they'll have WrestleMania live in front of fans. Then they'll have a new Thunderdome set up for after Mania. So it looks like they're still going back to the Thunderdome idea. And yeah, Welsh, I know that the New Day gets a tag title match again next week after winning this match. But but it's it's more of the same. We've seen them feud with the, the Hurt Business for so long now that it's mind-numbing. I actually start to drool when I see this on my TV because my brain shuts off. So I would... Um, I don't know what I would do for booking. I'd have to think about that for a later video. Someone in the chat said, why, why don't you book two hours of Raw or something like that? I'm like, yeah, maybe in another video I could do that. Um, I, 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 we've done this before. We, we've gone through and come up with, with weeks of feuds, and we've come up with scenarios and stories from jet skis all the way to, to tuxedo-wearing you know, secret agents. We, we've done this. They don't do their job. If they want us to do it, then hire us. Yeah, I mean, we, we have come up with a lot of things. I could come up with it any time we could come up with it. I mean, I've seen local wrestling promoters, man. Uh, when, I, when I did commentary for Top Row Promotions, Ryan Waters would come up with fabulous stuff to do um and the guys who are booking and all the guys who are booking with stuff that was great especially with the main event or the main story that i'd be like way invested in as a person at an indie event in front of 80 people or for 200 people i i, I was like wow i'm so invested in what's going to happen next Eddie goods and, captured the heart and minds of hundreds hundreds of people instantly just by between the story they told and uh, it's amazing what they and, got. And he, dude, he know, won that belt. Convey. Teddy Goods won the belt in a wonderful way because Ryan Waters, yeah. Ryan Waters was the champion for two years and he cheated so many times and even cheated Teddy before. And when he finally won, it was crazy. And then the and then Teddy Goods goes on a two year record breaking. Teddy Goods took the record for the top rope belt, which I believe Tommaso Ciampa held. For holding I the top rope promotion. Him. So he broke Tommaso Ciampa's record at top rope promotions. And dude, he was like John Cena here locally, like in front of at least, you know, whether it's 200 or 400 people a night. It was, I mean, but it was like I was invested because every time they came up with something super creative. You know what I mean? Even one time when he, when he finally defeated a bad guy that he had been wrestling a couple times and he defeated him finally. 
the bad guy went to come in the ring again and, and his friends came out, the devil's doorman come out. And I'm like, oh, they're here to help, you know? Now, I don't even know. Those the face paint guys that took on the Hardys? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, they they had a match with Teddy as well, like you said, and that was one of the ones I saw. And that well, so was they, stellar, too, they, with the whole story they told. They jumped in the ring, and they were friends, yeah. so I'm like, oh, his friend, you know, Teddy Goods is in no condition to have to fight now with this guy with a chair, and, you know, here's his friends, and then they turn on him, and then they beat the shit out of him, because he was holding both titles at the time, Teddy, so these guys want to beat his ass, and I'm like, dude, like, they, they just always had something that, like, wow, I got to see what happens next month, because they're not going to be back to this place until a month. Or, and they, they had people traveling from Fall River to Brockton, which was amazing, in my opinion. I, I'm like, seriously, like Fall River to Brockton is an hour away, hour and a half away, depending on where you are in Massachusetts. And they had the fans like, I got to see what happens next month when they, when they do fight or wrestle. And it was pretty good. You know, some nights were light. But my point in all this is I don't ever almost feel that way with WWE, almost ever. I never think... That old feeling of I got to see what happens, you know. AEW, I kind of feel it on a lot of times. Uh, feel like that bit. more often with AEW. I'm I'm trying to honestly think the last time, excluding like a WrestleMania that I for WWE, I was like I need to tune into this. I'm sure someone will say something. And I'm like, yeah. Um, yeah. SummerSlam, the Fiend debut. That was one that I was like really looking forward to. Uh, you know, that, that was a big match for me that I was like really excited for with everything mm -hmm. that happened. We didn't know how the fiend was going to look and act and what would his entrance be like, you know? So that was a lot of intrigue. Um, I mean, there's been some matches along the way, but, but really for like the past year, I know the pandemic messed up a lot of it, but Jesus, it's, it's just been piss poor booking. You know, you figure really... they, they have a chance to, to fix things like not so much on the fly, but, but pretty quick because they can edit rather quickly with, without having fans there. I mean, you're telling people who they can and can't cheer and boo for. You have everything made in the palm of your hand. Just just give us something good. Do you want to know what I would do right now? I'll tell you right off the bat what I might do. Right. We got where's Aleister Black on Raw or SmackDown? Uh, he's supposed to be on Raw, I thought, right? Didn't he get so drafted to SmackDown would, last, and then he wasn't used at all, or was he still on Raw at that point? I think he's on SmackDown now, but I, I'm not positive. I would, he got uh, SmackDown, they just never used him. Oh, if he's on SmackDown, then never mind. But I was gonna say, I think it'd be fun to, to, I think it'd be fun to put Aleister Black in the Shane Braun match, and have it a triple threat, triple threat match made in hell or something like that, and. uh you know, have and we can work out a story real quick to add him in there too. Yeah, and you could make Alistair Black a simple bystander, and that gets you know scooped up into this, or you know have him be the one that's manipulated. You know, you, you, there's tons of things we can do with no, this. No, I, I mean I'm make, talking about before this whole idea of you know Braun, you're dumb. Oh, even before that, just to get to the triple threat, you know, we don't no, don't worry what the story is. Just to get to that match, I'm saying we can come up with a hundred different creative ways to do it, and it would be exciting. Well, I would Especially have. For me. I'll tell you what I would have had. I would have had Braun versus Alistair Black. They get into some kind of fight in the back. They cause chaos because they're in a fight. Then they have a match together, and in the match, they beat up the referee because the referee's trying to get them to stop doing illegal things in the match. So they they end up beating up the referee, and then you know Vince McMahon wants to suspend both of them. And Shane's like, let me take care of it. I'll, I'll take care of everything. I'll be the referee. You know, I'll be the referee, an enforceful referee. I'll make sure I enforce everything on these two guys. They can't be controlled. And book it is that these two guys are insane. And then I would be Shane McMahon's the referee. And once again, he loses control. And they end up beating the fuck out of Shane. So says he, Shane says, uh, well, Vince is like, well, you're going to let me suspend him now, right? Uh, because you can see Shane. I don't want you to suspend him, Dad. I don't want you to suspend him. I want to. I want to beat the hell out of them. I don't got anything going on at WrestleMania. I want to fight them at WrestleMania, you know. And Shane inserts himself, and the three of them have this just fucking. And I want it to be in Hell in a Cell, or I want it to be in whatever. I want it to be like no rules, whatever the fucking. So they have a hardcore match essentially, or whatever you want to call it, or maybe invent a crazy match that's never been done, um, and have the three of them in a match with the goal of putting over Aleister Black. You know, at some point, Braun's going to do something crazy, like run through a wall, and the whole fucking wall is going to fall down, or the cage is going to fall down, or the cage falls down on Braun and fucking, you know, Aleister Black, like, ties it down. I don't know, whatever you got to do. And then he fucking kills fucking Shane. And then Aleister kills Shane. Aleister defeats Shane and Braun at WrestleMania. Braun sucks anyway, so, you know, he's the threat, but he can lose. We don't care. Shane is going to do crazy shit, and he doesn't need to win. And Aleister Black goes over on both of them. Boom. I don't know. That's just an idea yeah. randomly, but 
I guess the funniest takeaway out of all of this for me is that now Don Callis is cashing in on WWE with his leg slap shirt have you seen this yet no but it's great and don Callis, by the way as we've always said for 30 years or something don Callis, the best guy on commentary the other night amazing yeah on sunday night for revolution i loved his addition like even if you go back and when i was re-watching the ending he sold the the ending like no other like it was really like i gotta get out of here and him screaming you know, he act like i said everybody acted well it sucks that the pyro was so bad because Ah, oh, what a disappointment. But he went ahead and he made a shirt. I don't know if himself, but he's selling the shirt. It says, do not slap leg when kicking. <laughs> and it's got the, the big red you know, band sign, the sensor logo going through it. It's such a simple design, but hell, it works and it's effective. And Best and, leg slap ever was Jake Roberts, and he did it great. Jake Roberts had a phenomenal... See, a leg slap is not an issue. It's the overuse of it and the super yes, kicks, the yes. constant super kicks and kicks and, and leg offense that they've turned it into... You know, that's that's what's gotten ridiculous. And yeah, see, I always Vince... thought the leg slap on a super kick should only happen if you're finishing somebody. Yeah, if it's the end, you want to make it sound emphatic. You want that yes. boom, that impact. But you should not leg slap on a regular just super kick that's out of nowhere. You know, I, I don't know. Super kick should be a finisher. They should be thrown out of anywhere. They, those, those People use super kicks like they use DDTs. You know, th those should be... Held for, for you know, uh, I don't know. That's a whole other story in its own right, but. Super kick has And then been I, I guess one of the, the big bits of news from tonight as well is WWE confirming their huge announcements for NXT this week. Uh, you know, William Regal is going to make two announcements. Well, we already know what the announcements are going to be. It, it's, it's not a spoiler. Uh, you know, we're going to have women's tag titles for NXT now. Those are being debuted. And then we're also getting the announcement of TakeOver Stand and Deliver, which will be a two-night event on April 8th and 9th. That'll be before WrestleMania, heading into WrestleMania. And that'll be before they change to Tuesdays on the USA Network. Okay. Plus, this week on NXT, we have two big title matches. Finn Balor and Io Shirai are both defending their titles. So the men's and women's NXT championships will be defended Wednesday. Crazy, crazy night. Going to be huge. Adam since Cole they, and Tony since, Storm. So Basically, since they won't really have a pay-per-view until Mania, that, that special event you just talked about. Yeah, this Wednesday. Yeah, until they, they have the, the takeover Black before Mania. Japs, gun Whoa. down whack backs and deport Arabs. Oh, God. Well, AJ Adams. Dr. Seuss says that? <laughs> Damn. Does, what does Dr. Seuss say about your people? That's crazy. It's It's International Women's Day. I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> you just uh, you got to open the real book and say I don't like whites, but I really hate blacks. I want to go. Whoa, Doctor Seuss, Jesus, Doctor you know, Seuss, Doctor Doctor Racist. That's what it comes down to on International Women's Day. I I never even knew that was a thing. Did anybody? Yeah, like two years ago, I I was discovering this was a thing. So I, it's it's been more in the limelight recently, but yeah, well, of shit course. bum. What's good? Oh, damn. Very limited amount left on my COVID-316 shirt. Bobby Lashley needs to be a TV-14 world champion along with his crew. Cheers to the podcast tag team champions Jake Big Daddy Cool DeMarco and Joe Crush Cronin. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you, Botch, Botch Club. Club. Guys, go email Botch Club and get that T-shirt, bro. The COVID shirt's going away. There's only a few more left. Guys, he, he, he still sending one aside for me, but you guys got to get yours. So make sure you do. Yeah. He told me the other day. DM Please. them, uh, you know, Botch Club, directly on Instagram to set your order. Yeah, DM him. Hit him up right away. Get that COVID shirt, the COVID 316 shirt. And, they're, and he's right. The thing is, we want the Hurt Business to kind of, like, be killing it. Like, the other guys, all the guys should be kind of winning right now. You know, all of them. You know, they should all really be doing well. And that's why, again, that loss doesn't make sense to me. Like, it's like, make these guys all look strong. Why, why are you sending signals that there's a kink in the in the Hurt Business? You know, I mean, I guess it sort of shows how Bobby yeah, Lashley's I, I, the you, leader and he's the one that does everything well, but, I mean... They should be a full, unified front. They they should not have any issues. They're champions. They're winning. Like they, You know, they lost tonight, but that, that shouldn't be the case. They should just continually be be putting out great matches and and be the workhorses of Raw. They should be at the top right now. I would I would love to see them main event Raw consistently. I mean, I don't think they're the greatest thing 
All right, but I mean, I think they're, they're one of the best on Raw currently. If yeah. I had to pick anybody to watch, I, I like Drew a lot. I like Sheamus currently. I mean, he's he's good in the ring. I didn't mind him with the face roll with Drew. I don't quite go with the heel thing right now. We'll see, but he's he's usually pretty competent in the ring. But Orton hit or miss again. He can be boring, but he can also put on you know pretty stellar moments. Not matches, but moments. Uh, but but really, the Hurt Business, Bobby Lashley can be exciting in the ring, but Cedric and, and oh my God, he's been really exciting. Cedric Alexander and Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I'm saying that. I, I agree. Yeah. They're the best thing on Raw, but again, they're not that good still. So it's like, oh, it's like no, this I, is I, the I, best I, thing I, on I Raw. There. The, yeah. be, the best thing on Raw to me is a 6 out of 10, Bobby Lashley and the Hurt Business. Yeah. That's yeah. the best thing no, on Raw. No doubt about it. <laughs> and that's that's the problem you know even with drew he, he had no one to go up against he had this really good guy champion and and no one to face so it just made him seem very bland one of the best things i feel like we got out of drew was short-lived but him going up against roman it finally felt like wow he's got a real person to face but unfortunately drew's got to lose yeah he was protected with the outside interference and jay uso being there and wasn't straight up but at least he finally had like a real competitor same thing with Goldberg. That wasn't too bad. It was short-lived. We all thought Drew was going to lose. He didn't. Okay match. But he still never got to be that, that executive-level champ that I think he could be. I mean, they definitely need fans there, but you need people to go against. If, if Austin was going up against you know the big boss man at Mania, it wouldn't have worked like it did against The Rock or, or Shawn Michaels. You, know, you, you need those type of figures. Yeah, I mean, there's nowhere near that right now, and so that's kind of like... No. This is, you know, it's just depressing to me, like, the whole thing. I mean, what, I'm impressed by Bobby Lashley's entrance. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Hey, yeah, the best thing Drew, was... Drew uh, acting like he's not okay with losing the title is something that I'm complimenting. Of course, you should never be happy that you lost. Uh, and then they had that really stupid segment as well with R-Truth, I forgot to bring up. But, you know, you had him and Strowman already looking like an idiot in the back. And then Truth's apologizing to Strowman for a number. Of, I don't even know what the hell he's, you know, he's saying. Like, I'm not, and he's like, I'm not looking for an apology. I'm like, I'm going to the ring to demand an apology for Shane. And he's like, oh, I'm a fragment of, of your imagination. It's like, what? No, our truth can be funny. Don't, don't do this, please. It was just <laughs> embarrassing. Nothing was, that wasn't funny. And, and then... Again, this set up everything to happen with Braun. Why Braun is demanding an apology anyway is stupid. Okay, but they're going to have him get something out of Shane. But then the rest of it fell to shit. So, Oh, my God. I, I just don't know, Joe, at this point. Like you said, the best thing on Raw, I, I understand what you're saying now. I, I didn't get it at first. But I concede to that fact. That is true. The best thing on Raw is a 6 out of 10, and that's bad. That's you know There are people that I do like to see and I do enjoy, but no one's exceeding that level. On SmackDown, they have, uh, we were just talking about this, Luke and I, earlier. You know, again, you can check out the podcast soon enough on Joe's Patreon, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. He puts out a bunch of extra content, not all just wrestling stuff, guys, either. So tons of content up there, a lot of different shows, worth it, a bunch of different tiers. We have a bunch of great $25 producers that help keep the lights on in the Joe Cronin show. So thank you all so much. And yeah, it's just, there's so many talented individuals on SmackDown, like exceptionally talented that they're, they're mid roster. The IC title picture is stacked beyond stacked. And it just, it's, it's got this great thing going. They just need better stories over there. And, and that's the thing is where raw kind of needs a few more talents and better stories. SmackDown's got the roster set. They just need better creative direction. I, I, I'm i pausing now because somebody just sent me a, a Zoom call where Ryback is on and he messes up or something. Oh, no. We have to see this. Really rely on. On. Can't pass this up. Something. Zoom. 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 Hackers have managed to interrupt <laughs> Zoom meetings. <laughs> As annoying as that must be for some teachers and stuff, some of those videos are so goddamn funny. I like the simple ones where you know no one's getting harmed, but it is funny when you see somebody crash like a college course and, and just be a complete nuisance. That's the I don't know. It's like him giving the finger to somebody. <laughs> That's I mean, I don't even understand the context of that. I guess I don't know. That is pretty funny. It just came in from a dono though. And uh, it's a great dono. I'm gonna play the uh, activity in a second here. So here it comes. Right. Let me uh, let me drop it off here. Let me let me let me play it real quick. I'm gonna get your donation in here. 
but uh, I'm a little bit dumb right now, so just bear with me one second. Take me one. I'm like Ryback right now. Uh, I don't understand the context of this. Maybe if I knew more, it'd be funnier. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, Did you just donate to Joe? I'm not really sure what it's Did about. you just donate to Joe? Thank you for the donation. Thank you. And because you donated, I'm going to feast. Yes, Jake. Jake lost a lot of weight. I ate him. In the bungalow. I, Jake allowed me to eat feed from his nipples. <laughs> it's just it. Fox News sucks tipped three dollars. Republicans have somehow become bigger crybaby idiots than liberals. All they do is whine about cancel culture and how everyone is against them. They cry the most about Trump losing because he was their god and they worshipped him. Repubs cry me a river. I don't know, man. I think, um, first of all, I hate this politics guy. But um, I got to tell you, brother, I hate both parties. But nobody cried as much as the left wing did for the last four years. Have you noticed it's gotten a lot quieter recently? I was just going to say that it is like eerily quiet as where before there was just always daily such a ruckus what did trump tweet say do sign not do you know what is he to be blamed for i feel like we, just with the biden stuff it's never trending it's never yep. widely discussed it's very just brushed under the rug and i voted for him i'm, I'm admitting this you know like it just i know that's what i'm very, saying i'm not uh, trying to i'm not being i'm not pushing a narrative i don't give a no, fuck no, it's just it's a, it's a way of life now it's a fact it's yeah. just things are much quieter when they're not screaming orange man bad constantly so i guess mm. i guess fox news sucks would like to have all the news stations be liberal news stations <laughs> make them make them all left wing can you imagine if there was seven fox news is like there's seven cnn's like that'd be oh, really God. funny um See, that's but, why you only need one fox news don't that's don't watch the news dude don't watch cnn don't watch msnbc don't watch cbs <laughs> don't watch fox don't watch any news if you watch the news you're a fucking idiot how about that? Yeah, the, the Democrats were, you know, especially not just Democrats, but mostly everybody left leaning was was for four years constantly. Anything that they could grasp, oh my onto, god, any straw they could they could. Squeeze uh, that's the out. only thing is, I feel I feel like, oh, thank God that shit stopped. Yeah. Oh and, my and god. We're not really like people were obviously the right side was definitely upset and everything that happened with the election, whatever side you stand on, still, but it has quieted down a lot. So it, it is very. I don't want to say unnerving, but it is unsettling at least. What's it like I to mean, uh, what's it vote? Not what's totally it? worrisome, but it's still like I'm waiting for something. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. What uh, what ha what's it like to vote uh, for a molester? <laughs> hey, it's better than the uh, the uh, you know the rapist. So I'll take it. Let me play a donation. That's my stance. To Joe, did you just donate to Joe? Thank you for the donation. Random video guy. And because you donated. I'm going to feast myself. Random video in guy. Bunghole. <laughs> oh. I get I gotta, video guy I, I gotta figure out why it's not reading these. I think it's because he put a link in. Uh he said, Hey guys, are you in the mood for a quick laugh? Quick story. I was on YouTube surfing at work, minding my own business when I ended up in random <laughs> seeing seeing Ryback randomly on a Zoom video fail compilation. That's hilarious. So this is so, a video. So the, this is all failures of Zoom calls here. Yeah. And Ryback just happens to be one of them in there because he can't figure out technology ever. <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess he doesn't... Apparently, I don't know if this is true, but apparently he doesn't realize his video is on. He's done this before in a live stream for what? Not YouTube. It was one of them, like a, a Twitter, Instagram, something like that. Somebody showed me the clip. This is like a year ago, but I remember him doing that where he thought it was ended and it was still alive. So, yeah, not, yeah, not the first time he's had issues with technology. Right, right, right. So here it is. Like, let's let's take a look at it. I mean, like, I don't know. Now this is the one before Ryback's, which I think a, a raccoon like eats this guy's balls or something. <laughs> Oh, the cat oh, starts attacking him. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That is pretty bad. This is Omar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, dude! A cat fucking just attacks his balls. It looked like goes off on him. Look at that stuck in his crotch. Oh. What the hell is going on? Bad kid. This is Omar. Maureen, okay. who? <laughs> <laughs> who and what was that? All right, we're yeah. She looks like the Baptist church lady. 
person. Oh my God. So yeah, these people go in and they troll all these Zoom calls. Popular video these, conferencing app, Zoom. 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 But what does it have to do with Ryback? If they're trying, uh, this, he's not actually being right. He's just taking clips and going in, and, and I, that's what I'm thinking. I don't think this is actually of Ryback. So you think he's editing Ryback in here doing? Yeah, this? I think he's just using a, in this one. But I've seen other ones where Ryback's messed up, and that's hilarious. So yeah, he's just joining. This guy joins random Zoom calls, yeah. and then changes his camera or oh, does. Oh, and he puts up something. Stuff. So weird. he put up like he was Ryback. So he just yes. shows up and they're having a town hall meeting. Yep. And next thing you know, Ryback's there flipping you off. All right. Or uh, you're in a professor's you know, <laughs> English class and then you got Mickey Mouse railing Minnie because they put on anime porn. You know, oh stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really funny. But I, I got to join my town's thing. Oh, yeah. People do like, you know, town meetings. And uh, what was the one the other day? Oh, well, like, like not so much like the, the cat. Lawyer, that was funny. The lawyer ended up being a, a well. Since Ryback blames, shit, but. since Ryback blames me for when the people troll him about me, I'm gonna blame him that he actually did this to these people. There you go. That's so how we'll set it up. Um, Look at Ryback invading this meeting. This lady. Look at that. This poor lady doesn't know what to think. He's flipping her off, yelling at her. <laughs> Look at him. And it looks like a, a you know you don't you don't know that's a wrestler. Most people. So that's what's great. <laughs> Right. He's just eating food and he's that's <laughs> he's one of his smiling. live streams where he's re <laughs> he's responding to chat. So that's hilarious. Big Bear Lake, California. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> <for questions. laughs> These are hilarious. Oh my god. I gotta watch more of those later. That's way I too I told funny. you that's what I was mentioning before. They're funny. Uh, I've I Danny showed me a few of those clips. Oh my, my god. My fat ass has actually done that before. I've broken yeah. a chair like that. And that's a, I told you that story. That shit's embarrassing as hell, but funny. That is way funny. What is my this? roommates took out some of the screws in my chair in my college uh, chef, my, my nutrition class. Uh -huh. So the chef, I was the fat kid in class already, so no one liked me in that. You know, the teacher was always giving me a hard time being the fat kid in nutrition. And then rat bastard roommates took the few of the screws out of the chair. So as soon as I sat in the chair, I just heard it squeak, and I'm like, yep. And I just... Going down. Yep. No, I had to stand for the rest of the time in his class. Oh, he gave me so much shit for that. Jake Donnie M has been a member down below for 16 months. Donnie M, thank you. Holy hell. 16 months that he's dropped the uh, the monthly membership here on YouTube with the green badge. He's got the Jake DeMarco icon unlocked. He's got all the icons unlocked. Donnie, shit bomb. Thank you, Donnie. Awesome. Five thank tenths you. for all. It's just boring, disappointed face. Yeah, Nolan Mercer, you're a beast, man. Thank you, brother. And two dollars coming in from Nolan Mercer, and it it was boring. It was pretty boring. It's it's the repetitive stuff that keeps happening. It's you know Alexa Bliss, Randy Orton's gonna spit out black stuff again. Alexa's still playing with her fucking thing. It's just it's like seeing the same goddamn show over and over and over and over again. At least exactly. AEW, there was, there was nothing different. He's coughing up the black stuff. This is the third week in a row that he's coughing or acting sick. Uh, like, what are we getting here? And and people that can't or don't really care for the YouTube side of things, you know, if you don't want to subscribe here or, uh, excuse me, become a member here, you can go ahead and subscribe hey Joe, on Twitch. I like them on my raw. Do you like them on my raw? For free hey with Jake, Amazon. I like yeah. them on my raw. Do you like them on my raw? <laughs> hey, chat. I like them on my raw. Do you like them on my raw? Foo slash CK this SH slash shit. <laughs> I like the Monday Night Raw. Pesharo, man, what's been up, Pesharo? Thank you for the three dollars, dude. A um, couple more coming in. A donation yeah, from thirty like minutes ago. Like you said, ago. anyone with Amazon Prime can become a subscriber over on Twitch for free, and it's a great help to the channel as well. So you can subscribe there. It's Evil Spectrum Three on Twitch. Joe plays a bunch of you know different games like Diablo, or uh, even some you know battle royales at times like PUBG and whatnot. So. It's always a good time. Make sure you check out Twitch. WWE does not there. know how to leave well enough alone. Sheamus and Drew had a knockout drag out brawl. They saw the great reviews the match got and got so excited that something actually worked. Now they want to do it again. Hard to catch lightning twice. Yeah, they don't know how to leave well enough alone. No doubt about it. Um, TJ, what's up, man? Thank you. They saw great reviews in the match and they got excited. Yeah, they. Yeah, it's like and I get it because everything sucks. So if something happens, they're like, oh, wow, this is going to work. You know, I don't know. I, I In some ways, I get it. But it's it's weird when fans say they love something and people start getting behind and going crazy. They ignore it and they barely follow through on it, like Wade Barrett, stuff like that. 
But yeah. then with this stuff, they go, oh my god, do it again, do it was again, AJ do it again. Styles gonna face at WrestleMania? How can one of two guys in company have a path this close to Mania? I don't understand how AJ Styles isn't wrestling for either the United States title. I would put him against. I would put him up against for the eight for the United States title in a ladder match. If there isn't a six man ladder match, I'd have AJ Styles and uh, Mr. Bro uh, for the U.S. title. That's a smart way to do it. I know it sounds like typical but that's because there's a reason it works yeah i mean just it's it's consistently good you know and unlike last night i feel like the wwe's ladder matches have been calculated risks and spots lately like the the ladder match they had on smackdown i believe it was don't mind if i do that was amazing oh that was good yeah, yeah. aj sammy and um, you want creamy goodness i'm your friend say hello to my chocolate blend this is not the greatest super chat in the world. This is just a tribute. <laughs> Cheers to Joe and Jake. Thank you so much, M Mickey K90. Mickey K9, thanks for the five dollars, man. I really appreciate you gotta it. Gotta believe us. This is just a tribute. Oh, Tenacious D. Now, um, when uh, I opened up my front door this morning, mm -hmm. I had a. Uh, bit of a surprise and the surprise was this oh wait this is the wrong video oh, well, <laughs> but whatever just let's just go with it. why are you doing that why are you doing that so pissed <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> you gotta cut your hair. Gotta cut your hair. Why are you doing that? Keep on. <laughs> getting annoying. He's trying to ignore you. You're gonna come on and cut your hair after the game, okay? Fine. Hey. What? I'm gonna part. No, this is a new one. That was a new one. No, no, no. I know. I saw it earlier on Twitter. That oh. was my favorite part. When he goes ahead and he turns around at you with just that stare, that what? <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's grown up so much. Look at that fire in the yeah, little teen's eyes. He's 11 now. I know. I, I remember him being so much younger. And it just the same thing with Danny. You know, you go ahead and you get that attitude. You're like, oh, forget it. Teens are here. Yeah, it's almost like the teens are already here. It's great. He's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, and I'm telling you. I mean, uh, he, he really has grown up, like, a lot. Like, it's... It's it's crazy. Um, I can't believe it. Like, it's, I said to him earlier, I go, man, I can't believe you. Dude, this is... Um, just real quick, and I'm going to show you another video that I got real quick. I got to show you guys something. We'll play more donos. Um, this is 2015. It just arrived. Check. Look at Gavin. Look at that. You know it's Lucha. You know it's Wrestle Crate. You know it's Wrestle Crate when you see the Lucha mask. Look at that. It's awesome. Look at Gavin. He's either five or six there, right? You know? Yeah. Roughly. Oh, like five yeah. Or oh, first thing is a giant red t shirt. Wow. <laughs> t shirt. World, world's greatest tag teams. This is awesome. Look on the cover Shelton Benjamin. This He's giving is a thumbs up. Get to the top cream of the. Wrestling's true great at these villain. openings. I always look Portrait forward to you doing these with him. They were a lot of, a of fun when you guys had the wrestle crate. crate. Go to wrestlecrate.com, enter in coupon code uh, Joe sent me, and get and get macho man and get ten percent off your wrestle crate. Give me five. Oh yeah, wrestle. <laughs> he started sending him his own little box too, which was even more. Yeah, badass. The, yeah, and so then we really we cool. actually sent my son in a box. Yeah, to well, I mean, back to the people that you owe money to, but You're right. The cartels. They only took his only. Oh, they only took his pinky toes. Look what came to me in the mail today, courtesy of Casey mm, is go. fat. Because some of the this this belt is stretched. The leather is stretched on this belt from all the fatties. 
I want to let you know that I Casey, can, I didn't even stretch that belt. Damn. I, I cannot get this belt around my waist almost. When I put this belt around my waist, it's the last button. So can you imagine that I can't yeah, get I would, around I my waist? Four belts, so. How many of you sorry losers out there wish you were wearing this belt mm. around your waist? But you're not because you're a loser. Because the only winner is me. The only person that gets to wear the belt is a champion. And a champion's a winner. And you're looking at the biggest winner of all. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Even my dog's jealous of me. <laughs> the champ is here. The belt was supposed to be upside down. He's trying to be Bobby I mean, Lashley. You know what it is? Is my camera? I realized is is on like mirrored mode or whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah, so it reversed it. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> so it's reversing everything like in the wrong way. Very strange. Very weird. Follow me at JCS Commentary on Twitter, by the way. Help me fight the trolls on Twitter at JCS Commentary. Um, Good luck with that. But happy the Twitter has been a nightmare lately. Oh, I, God. I, I'm not just me either. Many people. Someone funny enough brought it up tonight. You know, when we saw on Twitter that they're saying, "What is going on here? It's just been bad, and it's it's just gotten worse." With things have been quiet on the political side, but cancel culture and everything else has gone to hell. So yeah. And apparently, B Lee, D Welsh, a few others uh, sent us a clip of Peyton Royce. She went off on Raw Talk tonight. I know we can't play the clip itself. We might be able to play the audio. They did tag us in it on Twitter. I know we can't play the full clip, but apparently it's really good, and people are, are blowing up about it on Twitter saying what's that really it was good, impressive. What's it? What is it? Uh, Peyton Royce. She cut a oh, really yeah, good yeah. promo on Raw Talk. I mean, she's not on Raw, so at least if they get her on Raw Talk, there's that. But apparently, she went off and she wants an opportunity against Asuka and really made a claim for her case. So I was good. just thinking, maybe, maybe they'll use her. I was just thinking about them in a triple threat earlier. I was looking at the women's thing when someone said, "What would you do?" And I was get like, get Charlotte out of there, build up Peyton, and let her and Asuka go against each other at Mania. Well, I was gonna, I, God, I was gonna put Charlotte against Peyton, but okay, okay, way, that's fine too. Or put the three I, of them. I just all together. don't want to see a triple threat with Charlotte and Asuka. I don't want to see Charlotte. And Did Asuka you see the people all. attacking Raj Jerry because he said uh, he made a joke about Kenny Omega? He was like, oh, she, she's being pushed because is she must be Kenny Omega's girlfriend or whatever boyfriend. Yeah, and they always make that joke. Pretty much continually. I mean, everybody says that that uh, you know all the Japanese women are pushed because that that's you know Kenny's infatuation. That's one of Cornette's like mainstays. You know, Kenny Olivier, uh, you know, Marco, you know, going ahead. And Marco I thought Hubs, it was hilarious. They're uh, like, I'll exactly. never read them again. I'll never like this guy's uh, deserves to die. They were like saying like this guy deserves to be tortured and stuff. Like, it was crazy. I was like, man, fucking Twitter is psycho. People are crazy. All because Raj said, oh, you know, I think she's just in the match. I think she's just the champion because she's Kenny Omega's girlfriend. So, okay. I don't understand. Like, you know, it's like I'm trying to find, but somebody tweeted me, Peyton Royce. Oh, here it is. A hidden behind the opinion of others. But why not just let me go? Just let me go and see what happens. You know, our Raw Women's Champion, Asuka, she's injured right now. And yes, that sucks for her. But when a talent... What is the noise in the background? They're still playing the crowd? <laughs> like, it's, it's no crowd. They're still playing the crowd noises. Why? ...goes down, a spot opens up. Yeah. And that spot is massive. So why not me? Why does it always have to be the same old, same old? Jake? You know, I, I packed up my life. I moved across the world. I set up in a completely different country with, with hey, not much of a support to system you. to chase this dream. To to what? To get stuck in the locker room watching other women do what I do better than 98% uh, of them. And the other 2%. <laughs> well, I'd sure as hell give them a run for their money. It actually hurts. 
when you know deep in your soul you are destined to be where you are, striving for what you feel you deserve. You're already back? What the fuck? No, my potential haunts me. When you're striving for something that you feel you really deserve. Hmm. This is where I'm meant to be. And my patience has been running thin for quite some time. So stop wasting my time and give me Oscar. The ending wasn't bad, but... It was all right. Everything else was a little less than stellar. Well, yeah, sorry about that. My, I uh, I, I, how did you get back on so quick from a blue screen? That was crazy. Yeah, I looked out here. Didn't turn uh, that long. It just froze and cut out and came right back. So, lucky me. <laughs> Jesus. I guess it takes me longer because i got to start up a million things before I get back Well, because you're going so. live, too. So, yeah. then you have to get back in. You have to get X split open. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I just I'm... literally opened up this. Oh, oh shit. shit. It's Shell. Shell tipped $21. Another rinse and repeat raw. Come on, WWE boring as shit. Three tenths. Once again, rinse and repeat. I agree, Shell. I'm going to give it about the same. I'm going to give it about maybe a four out of ten. I I just can't give it a better grade than AEW because even though AEW was pissed me off last night, at least it was something. Something. You know, Raw was just, here it is again. You know, like we said, there's things to look forward to, and even you know there was still good matches on the pay per view last night. Right, right, we right. Still right. had you know good things throughout all of it. Raw, I'd give this a two and a half, two point five. Damn. I mean, there was not even a match that I was like, oh damn, I'm glad Let's I give it saw a three. that. I'm giving it a three. It. I'm going to give it a three. But that, yeah, yeah, that that seems but that, fair. A three. There was just nothing tonight. I, at least weeks before, last week, I'm like, oh, we, we at least have a new champion. We've got, you know, some decent matches here and there. We had that Sheamus and, and Drew thing. Nothing. It was all repeat. So they made it no DQ, but then they had to knock each other out. The 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 Lashley championship match was a joke and didn't need to happen, and there was nothing else that was competitive or worth watching. I think the longest match of the night, uh, you know, was probably the, the Drew thing, and even that was just kind of underwhelming. So, uh, yeah, that was 18 minutes. Like I said, the, the Bobby Lashley match felt a lot longer, and so did the uh, Shayna and Nia tag match with Naomi and Lana. It was eight minutes. To me, it felt like it was 20 Especially with all the Reginald stuff, so. Right. Why they got another shot, you know, to go for the tag titles, I don't know. I'm not happy that they're having NXT women tag titles. I would have preferred that they just gave those tag titles to NXT. Because the NXT has a has one of the best women's divisions ever. But they don't have anything to fight for except for the one women's title. And that's usually, you know, saved for the upper echelon. So what do the rest of the women have to do? It's nice when they have these tournaments and things. But this is a perfect thing for NXT to have. And then they can take those NXT women and bring them to Raw and SmackDown. Well, let's go ahead and uh, l- let me get to Christian Chaos first if he's on the call. Um he called last night. We didn't get him on. So, uh, Christian. Chaos. What's up, man? Christian. Is he there? His mic is muted. All right, Welsh. What do you got, Welsh? My God, dude. We're always, Jesus Christ. I'm here. What a I'm shit here. show. Here. Hang on a second, oh, Christian. Fucking... Yeah, it was bad. No my, doubt. Did you watch the whole my thing? My God. I almost fell asleep. I wa- I watched from I watched from beginning to end and Jesus Christ, man. The only thing that I enjoyed was that Bobby Lashley entrance. That was pretty badass fire. And I'm not sure if you caught the end, Jake, where Alexa set the ring post on fire, but they missed one of the ring posts where they only had three and not the entire four. <laughs> I saw that the bottom right one wasn't on. I don't know why I just called Jake. I'm sorry. That was weird. 
Um, yeah, that was funny. Uh, they almost they botched too, but you know what? Their ring still looked more exciting than the AEW explosion. So yeah, I saw you calling. I'm like, oh, Joe, got to take off. I got to take over for a minute. Is that what's up? Oh, no, yeah, no, I'm just stupid. Idiots. Hey, uh, <laughs> I just hit the button. Well, Christian, what's up, man? Well, what do you got, brother? Raw was fucking garbage, bro. This is the worst fucking shit ever. We're we're into WCW 2000 territory at this point, my brother. Well, see, I think the WCW 2000 actually had more creativity. So, like, I don't even think. I think that was at least hilariously like stupid, like right, like that was so bad, it was dumb, but it was like funny, kind of. So bad, it was good. It was so bad, it was good. It was so bad, it was better than this. I'll say that, you know. I'm I'm pretty sure we're gonna get all sick and tired of Bobby Lashley's entrance music at the end of the day. If this, this was a great entrance music, don't get me wrong, but if they're gonna keep repeating it every week, I'm pretty sure people are gonna get really sick and tired of it real quick. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's it so. It's one of those things where it's like, that's a solid entrance. That's pretty cool. Just like Drew with the sword. Like, that's cool. But every week it's like, okay. But, like, you know, I, I think that Bobby Lashley and Drew remind me of each other in the way that they're 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 good, solid big guys. I think they're pretty – they can they're a little exciting in a way. But, you know, they're not going above a seven. You know, they're six or seven out of ten. They're, they're the best guys in the company right now, it seems like. But there's nobody – You where is our – we need an A plus player, or even I'll even take a B plus player. I feel like these guys are the B minuses, and they're in charge. So they're the C minus. Maybe a C plus. You know, I don't know, but I like them. But it's just uh, we're missing the superstars. We're missing the mega star, the mega superstar. Yeah, there is no hugely over talent right now that at all on Raw. SmackDown has a couple. I mean, if I, I at least Seth Rollins, it could be like all right, former champ, big to do. He's still pretty oh. big, but even he's not anywhere near what he used to be. So Roman Rollins Reigns is definitely a big star, but I, I mean, on Raw, you, there's no one that you could really go to to be like that's the guy or that's the girl. That I mean, even beforehand they had Becky Lynch and she was dominant. You can't say she wasn't. You know, what lover or hater? She was certainly famous and popular. So we don't have not that now. Edge is, Edge is not even helping the fucking ratings. They literally buried the fucking Mania match on SmackDown last week when they made Daniel Bryan cut a promo saying that Edge and R Roman don't deserve to be the main event of WrestleMania. Even fucking Bailey's Ding Dong Hello segment fucking buried the match when one of her fucking questions <laughs> was, "You should be your segment should be the main event of WrestleMania." Nobody gives a fuck about this fucking match at WrestleMania. Well, nobody in their mother cares about this match. I gotta be honest. I think I think it's gonna be one of the most interesting things at Mania, but it's still not. I don't know, man. Like I, I don't. It's, it's one of the best things we have to look forward to. I think is what you're getting at, but it's not what we want or what we were hoping for. Like it's still, I think, going to be a good match, and I like the story. Spear versus Spear. There's there's intrigue to it. You were on a great, you know, uh, heel run. You, on the other hand, haven't gone ahead and wrestled in ages. Now you're finally back, and you you never lost the title. There's a lot to it. So I, I think there's a, enough intrigue there, but it's now, still not. It doesn't feel as mania level as it could. For some reason, I'm not sure where where they are at this, but. They need to pick up the pace. It doesn't feel as, as certainly special as it could. We got ourselves a little cup of Luke Rojas. What's up, Luke Rojas? Hola. What's up, baby? You want to talk about Harry Potter's one penis again? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Expecto vagina. Uh, dude, that was... <laughs> Expecto that was, that raw was sucks again. Expecto raw tarded. <laughs> yeah, I got a T-shirt called Raw Tarted, guys. If you want to go check it out, Pro uh, no, uh, Teespring link is down below. Go get it. It's a lot of fun. But you yeah. can also you can also find two shirts on Pro Wrestling Spree or whatever the fuck it was called. Teespring. Isn't then you didn't you have two shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees? Oh yeah, two shirts on Pro Wrestling Tees dot com. Yes, go to Joe Cronin Show on Pro Wrestling Tees dot com. And order the classic Joe Cronin show shirt. It's classic. It's six years old now. It's still there. Yeah, anytime Pro Wrestling Tees has their sales going on, you can use the sales on Joe's merch as well. So yeah. get yourself you know, a shirt on a discount. Can't beat that. But you can't get Smackdowns or Raw Tarted. You can only get that on Teespring. And I know you love those T-shirts, yeah. Rojas. And, uh, oh, I love them. I, I love anything that makes fun of special needs people. Cause oh, I'm that's one. just... Anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. And wrestling. That's a twofer. Oh, no. my God. Because all <laughs> yeah, wrestling yeah, fans wrestling. are special needs. 
<laughs> sometimes yeah, sometimes they are. I mean, always. I mean, really, just you see people talk about wrestling who still kind of think think it's real, and they point out obvious shit like, oh. How come AJ Styles lost his championship but never defended it? And it's like, or something like that. And they'll point out like obvious shit that's not like that's obviously it's because it's scripted. But like, there's still people in the YouTube comments from like Abu Dhabi, you know, <laughs> Pakistan, yeah, who, who who don't understand that it's fake. So they're like, I do not understand why Drew McIntyre does not consult the police off police. With no, Sheamus as a deck, it just doesn't not make sense. The best one me, was so. where it was where like you Americans are really sick. The fact that you laugh at that <laughs> is so disturbing. Like, and it was like because I was laughing at what the heel did, and the guy was writing, <laughs> yeah. and his name was like <laughs> the fact that you laugh at that. His name was like uh, Ab Abdu Patel, like or something. <laughs> It was really funny. I just imagine him. I just imagine him being like a doctor, like, "Oh my god, I cannot believe that someone would laugh at something." The the horror that, I see, that's what it's the like. physicality, <laughs> <laughs> the violence. That's what it was like, dude. He was laughing. He was like, "Wow, what this? This is what America's wrong with you." <laughs> you have gladiator <laughs> matches in the year 2021. There's probably an eight, you know what you know what I think it is. I think it's like you know how American kids, you know, obviously any kids are kind of gullible. So American kids are gullible too, right? Because all kids don't understand. But I think American yeah, look at TikTok that'll but, tell you. But you know, a, a nine year old American kid most of the time knows, like, is like, oh, this is all this is all work. You know, I don't believe any of this. But like, you know, 30 years ago, a nine year old American kid would have believed it. But over, I believe that when I was nine or right. ten or whenever I started it. So, but over in some areas of India, not not all of India. A lot of India is smart. They know they know the deal. They're smart to the business. Not smart like smart people. I mean, they're they're all smart. But I mean, they're smart to the business. But there's still areas of India that aren't quite smart up to the business till certain ages. And so, I think a lot of the younger kids who are who buy it are, um, you know, in the comments like, "Oh my god." You know, I'm like laughing because of like a, you know, the ring exploded or, the, you know, the guy <laughs> fell out of the ring or whatever. And they're like, oh, my God. Wait. And it's just like, dude, it's 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 not real. That would have <laughs> been funnier if last night was like fantastic, like a fantastic show. And then it's and then it ended with with you know, like this little fizzle <laughs> sparkle. Show. Yeah. Like if it was a 10 out of 10 show all night, like just so close to perfect, amazing, best matches ever. And then you get that little fizzle. I think people would have just kind of like laughed it away a little bit more yeah. it still would have been an issue but i don't think it would have been as because we needed that to save the night we everyone I, did i think it would have been hilarious like more hilarious than because it was so bad the whole night yeah that was just was a just super like, disappointment and then it was just like this hop it all off the pyro doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were dying laughing before talking about it. I'm still just, oh God, just, uh, you know, the Titanic song is the perfect. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my God. That, that. that had me cracking up. Dude, I want to play that on this show so bad. Because it's I know. so funny. I, I sent that to everybody under the sun. I love that so much. That was all, so funny. All you can do is go watch it yourself or find it or I'll retweet it uh, because it's the funniest. Um, it's the funniest thing. Like, I can't, I'm afraid to play it, though. Yeah, because um, AEW was taking down everybody that had uh, put up the ending of, obviously, the pay-per-view. And obviously, they're doing it because they don't want people to put up the ending of their pay-per-view. They want people to go out and buy the replay from, you know, BR Live and whatnot. But you figure with this one being a dud, uh, just just let people meme about it and make it into something funny. Yeah, yeah. and you know what? I, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that all the pyro... But they got wasn't it all supposed to go off at once to simulate that it was an explosion? Yeah, it was it was supposed to be this huge near ring explosion that looked near fatal. Like that was the goal. When you've seen other matches, like the ending I showed you earlier from yeah, Twitter, oh my God, that, that massive so cool. explosion. That's how that's you know, like the Anita match, the way that ended was was not as uh triumphant as that one, but still that's the goal. You want the ring to explode and you know, you had Anita laying over Terry Funk's body, same idea here, you know, you had Eddie saving Mox and and yeah. Yeah, that's the thing too. It was such a, a an emotional like moment. Over. It really was. It was such an emotional moment for for Get Eddie to come out to there. <laughs> no Get one's gonna over. save him. him no. no one's gonna protect you. No one's gonna help. And this is what you get. It's it's oh mind blowing that that you know it had to go so bad with the pyro side oh of things because God. it was so well executed on the acting side. 
But enough talking about how trash last night was and how hilarious it was. Let's talk about how bland tonight was because it started off really interesting. Bobby Lashley, I don't know, did he get new theme music or something? His no, entrance, just his entrance was more updated. They 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 changed some of the graphics, some of the lighting, and they added that 3D Bobby Lashley uh, PNG and they showed file. Clips. Yeah. And it was like really like damn like and the pyro the and the like, pyro when he gets in the corner plus him holding the title and just standing there with the three D VR thing of him that they had there yeah it was it was I thought that was pretty stellar hell yeah and he looked and he looked really legit earlier when they opened the show and he's in a suit and he's mm -hmm. holding the belt I love when people wear suits and hold championship belts it just <laughs> makes the belt feel it makes the belt feel professional kind of you yeah, know that was. Punk's problem with with uh, or excuse me, Undertaker's problem with CM Punk. So you know he wanted the champion. I won't do anything for anybody, no matter what the anybody asks me. If it's the Undertaker who asks me to wear a suit, I'm gonna be just a dickhead because I'm my <laughs> own thinking person. I'm independent. Fuck CM Punk. I hate and they, you. And then they you took his title. An asshole. Quick squash at Hell in a Cell, but. Yeah, that's uh, what you get. <laughs> even the Miz tonight sounded good on the mic. Like I said, it's not yeah. His promo before, was pretty good. good. We didn't mention that, and that that he was, so was good. At that. I did I did say that earlier because you know he's like the WWE did one thing right. They got my rematch, and as much as that pisses me off, he sounded good with them. You know, oh, you get a rematch. I thought rematch clauses were out for the last year and a half or whatever the hell. But it what was. was the point of it? Like, why just why to, just to, to put see? Bobby back over, and, and now Miz can't say I'm owed a title shot, so they get to wrap that up. It gets him one more week away from the pay-per-view. So now does Lashley have anyone to face at Fastlane? Is he defending the, the title, or are we going to see a number one contenders match? We have no clue what the build to Fastlane is, which is the build to Mania. We, we have no idea, no iota of an inkling of what's happening with the Raw title picture at all. The, you know, we kind of know what's going on with the women's side of things, but even then, it's still a mess. It's such a stupid pay-per-view. Get rid of it. Fastlane is Fast not, not needed. needed. It's, it's really not. Needed. not. It's like a really... Cover! Get him over! No! Kick the... Oh, Fastlane is not I can't stop playing <laughs> so different good. versions of it. I can't stop it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Matthew from Bajamania has like a dozen or more up oh on his my God. that are just perfect. And I know he's been creating Don't a bunch. Get him out of there. Cover! Get him out of there! No! Kicks it! Oh my... Jesus. Oh my God! <laughs> I, I want to I see like Kenny Omega and Moxley's reaction because you know if those guys are really, really pissed you know that like Oh yeah, they really fucked up because. Oh, Kenny apparently all, was livid in the back, Luke. He he was apparently allegedly from the reports that we've read, explosively angry. So, oh my god, maybe you should show some of that on TV and actually show a personality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, maybe that'll be on BTE next week. You know, <laughs> fucking bland loser. Oh my god, Jesus, come on! I wave my arms around and and stick my tongue out. Oh, I'm I'm charismatic. Fucking, I'm so sick of this shit. Let's see. I am salivating oh, here with you know, that reaction. Oh my He's the best wrestler ever. <laughs> I mean, oh my god. Honestly, I thought they did a okay job. It was really the pyro and everything. No, was, it's just, was, was it the paradigm shift or what move did they do to the outside, Joe? I don't remember off the top of my head. They did a. Paradigm they did shift. a. Yeah, they did. It was a DDT. It was a paradigm shift. Okay. Yep. And that was really disappointing because the pyro was so lackluster and, and simplistic that then. One. It just yep. kind of went... It, it, it's so weird. It went downhill. People started to boo then. <laughs> well, it went yeah, it went downhill. The, the the throwing into the ropes, the pyro went off, and it, every, and it was getting louder. And then on the one where Moxley put his foot on the rope, yeah, that, to break the that the, that yeah. was that really was like a crescendo. That was like then the crowd was starting to get really hot for it. That and was then, an OMG moment. Yeah, that worked but, well. But then the next thing was off the side of the apron, and they went through the tables there, and it was just kind of like underground little pop pops, like that really didn't. And it was like, yeah. oh, like they should have set the whole fucking thing off again, like during that too. I don't know. It just it it was that was where it went. Oh, that wasn't as good as when they get thrown into the ropes. Okay. And then it got downhill, downhill into the drizzling finale, which was, I, I, again, Shit. like I thought there was so much more to talk about as far as the whole show and the Christian cage thing. And unfortunately this was going to, this is still all the rage is what happened at the end because it's just so fucking ridiculous. 
They but, did my they did my boy Christian dirty though. Bro. Oh yeah, it's because he's a great guy. He's a great wrestler, and unfortunately, he's you know I, you know I, maybe and obviously I'm being an asshole, but I'm sorry. Like they built him up like he was fucking Hulk Hogan coming in. Yeah, and Christian, like like I was talking to Jake about this earlier. They destroyed his you know the WWE destroyed his credibility, destroyed him being able to be taken seriously, and now they're expecting us to be like. The biggest monument, most monumenting <laughs> return or you know entrance ever to AEW, Christian. And it's like oh. Kicks it. Oh my. Oh my god. <laughs> oh you my know, god. It, it would have been funny if Slapjack was the big signee to, yeah. the, to AEW. <laughs> oh my god. Like, oh Slapjack. my god. It's Jack Slap because they can't say Slapjack so. <laughs> Jack Slap Slaps, is yeah. here. He's here. He's here. <laughs> Excalibur oh is like marking out. Excalibur sucks, by the way. He was voted the number one announcer of the year. Oh, yeah, that that. That, that is immediately <laughs> wow. when the Wrestling Observer Awards went out the window for me. Just like Shock They've been out the window. Wow. They've but that, that was like forever. so egregious of a fuck up. To Excalibur is the number one commentator of the year. I mean, the co all the commentators everywhere suck, so that's not that crazy, but it's Oh, that Excalibur of I, he's the best they have today. I stopped holding the wrestling observer in any sense like in any type of like regard at all when it came to like first of all, they gave a match six stars. It's like or Dave Meltzer did. I don't yeah. know, like, you know, fucking. And He's then, like, over that. and it's also like, they said some fucking match. Uh, oh, uh, what's his name? Because I'm fucking terrible with names. Who's <laughs> the guy who had all. Who's Okada? Okada and Jay White from a few years ago got five stars and was loaded like the best match of the year or some shit. And it's like, can we pre stop pretending that these fucking random matches that you see on New Japan Pro Wrestling are best matches of the year? But can you look at this one? Look at this one right here on your screen real quick. Look at this. Yeah, I take, saw take that. Look at this. Fucking you bad. see this? Boom. Boom. Like, holy shit. I mean, even the, the audience is sent backwards. Look at all yeah, that. Yeah, dude. Not, the people but, got hit with pyro. But look at yeah. this. If you look at the explosions, it's not as severe as what you think. There's a ton of smoke. And then there you have the initial one, two, three, four, right? You got, and then the second blast comes, boom, and that sends the smoke back into the audience. You're competing with that. That's what you're I know. competing with. Terry Funk said that the one time that the blast didn't go off, I forget where it was. I've read so many of these names today, but uh, you know, he just stood up and goes, "Why?" We've seen the clip, you know, ages now. You know, because the, the audience is booing. What is he supposed to do? He just stands up and he's like, why? And he kind of collapses. Poor Funk. But but he said they spent $20,000 for the pyro that night that didn't go off. It looks like AEW spent $1.50. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't it know. It really did, really. sadly. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And it's like, it stinks, too, because like a few days ago, I was thinking, I was like, damn, Shaq's really in, the a in AEW? And I was just thinking, like, you know what? Maybe in a few years, AEW might be like the new WCW, and then something like this happens, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we've got a long time before that happens. It, you know, the like, Hardys deletion match with the fireworks was more exciting. Yeah. That's, like, that's You know, we've seen better fireworks than those. In the and first this one. This is a major embarrassment. But but it's not like they had, you know, a ring pyro fail to go off or anything like that. Like tonight, when they had the... the turnbuckle pyro go off only three of the four went off i, I don't know if that, that was intentional but the the bottom right one on the hard cam didn't go off i noticed it didn't take away from the experience but still that was a botch that's something that didn't work as planned but At it wasn't a big show, deal it didn't take away from the show last night that countdown was everything the countdown ended and we got such a failure to launch that uh they should have just called spacex i mean they're good at blowing shit up at the end of raw they should have just had like after like Randy Orton leaves the ring for some reason it's just holding on the ring and then all of a sudden it just <laughs> just explodes <laughs> and then Triple H <laughs> just says fuck you Cody <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm entertaining myself sitting over here capturing gifts of Lewis Lewis what's going on <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I can't get over it, dude. Dude, when the well, when... I'm listening to you guys talking about last night's uh, pay per view, and yeah, that was a big letdown. Yeah. Dude, the fact that the the sparklers start going off right as the like the music kicks in on the drums, ding, yeah. ding, and the the sparklers start going off, and then when he call, cr Carl covers up, oh my god, dude! dude, dude here it comes. I just can't get over it. It's so good. I gotta retweet how, how that again. How embarrassed do you think that um, Moxley and um, and fucking uh, Kingston were? Like, do you think they got into the back and were like, "Jesus Christ"? I'm dying <laughs> to see what have we Eddie's reaction. Someone must have thrown a shit ton of f bombs. I would actually pay yeah. like fuck the show. I'd pay a hundred dollars for the backstage documentary on that shit. Oh, it'll come out soon. They'll definitely, maybe in like three years or something, be like AEW backstage, and it'll just and it'll be Kenny Omega. What the fuck was that? You know, and th that'll be that. Ah, cool. And then he just starts when he gets really angry, he starts yelling in Japanese. He's no, like, no, "What he's... the fuck was that? What was that?" <laughs> and they're like, "What the fuck is he? Was he? Is what's he doing?" Oh, when he gets angry, I have to find another twelve-year-old girl to date. Oh no! Come on, what <laughs> Rajiri, what oh. are you doing? Yo, but uh, Antonio, Luis, Antonio, Alejandro, my friend, how are you? Uh, uh, kind of upset. What are you upset about? What's what's happening? You getting you getting swatted? What's going on? Uh, don't ask. I already did. <laughs> yeah, we're not we're not doing a live show that you called oh into to not talk. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just call up. <laughs> Just call up, be like, nah, don't ask. I'm gonna call into a radio show so I can not talk. Hey, uh, Lu <laughs> Luis, um, what do you what do you got, man? What do you want to say tonight? Bring it on. It's all good. Oh, I just want to say Ross sucked. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, Luis Antonio. And also, oh, and also, <laughs> oh, Raw made AEW Revolution look a little bit better. You might be right. I think you're right. You're right. Cause, cause yeah, the, I don't think so. Because I have no it, emotion for Raw. Enough of the bullshit. And I guarantee for WrestleMania, they will not have fans, even though tickets even though are they're going selling on tickets? sale next week. They're, they're literally selling like 15,000 tickets, though. What are you talking about? Thir yeah, 60, like 30,000. 60,000 60, tickets, Luis. 30,000 a night, two nights. Oh, okay. 30,000 a night. No habla español, señor. Habla inglés, es, por favor. Habla inglés, por favor. Tu madre es gorda, por you fucking motherfucker speaking Spanish. Come on, no, Luis. Yeah, I know it's up, Luis. Shell, you're wrong. The gerbil was stuck up his ass, but he used the shit repellent goggles. And oh the, my uh, god! You know, the flare gun to get that thing out. So no more. Luis, I, di I didn't see you when we were when I was sneaking across the border. I didn't see you. Yeah, how Which come? Uh, he made it what further than you. He you made more on this side of the country. I don't know what you just said. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you didn't understand. Why did you just run randomly go into Spanish, Luis? That was wild. How you just you just suddenly went into Spanish? Yeah, that was impressive. Oh, I got mad. Oh, is that, oh, so you're like Kenny Omega when he starts speaking Japan Japanese? Yeah. That's and you're that's, not just doing it to flex about how he's Jap how he knows to, how to speak Japanese. You just actually do it because it's like natural to you, right? Yes, and also I am beginning to learn Japanese. Oh, damn Japs. <laughs> hey, You're screwed now. Listen, man, don't you do that here. Habla inglés aquí mexicano, all right? Don't do that here. Don't you be doing that here, all right? Habla inglés aquí mexicano. Do you sometimes pretend that you don't know English to get out of like situations? I'm just like, kidding. Oh, I <laughs> 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 uh, uh, you want to say anything, Luis? Oh, yeah. Other than that, Mrs. a pussy. <laughs>
<laughs> well, you That's know right. That... I said it. I went there. Miz is a pussy. Yeah, man. Like, like, dude, he was trying everything, uh, uh, everything in his power wow. to try to get out of defending that title, man. It's but like Bobby Lashley beat him, man. He beat him, you know, Bobby Lashley. You're right, man. The Miz is a coward. Bobby Lashley beat beat your beat your ass. Did you? But so so you did. So you definitely. Did you not like Raw? Did you not like Raw at all? Like, uh, like I mean, this is the show you watch on TV. Te gusto el pro, uh, programa de televisión. I'm gonna ask you, you in Spanish. You said it correctly. <laughs> what? I normally do like Raw, but this week, I'm like, what the fuck? Are they yeah. really trying to make AEW look a little bit better? Why have I never noticed the uh, map behind you till now? Now it makes sense. Yeah, he's in a map too. <laughs> he's got a red dot on Google. <laughs> Honestly, I, why have I not seen apartment? that? How come all the lights are off in your place, dude? What are you hiding? I know we've heard the map. You know, are the owners on the accusation ground? Accusation before, but listen, this proves it. I love you to death, Luis. You know that. And Luis Antonio Alejandro is a producer, and I love him to death. But Veti a la cama, uh, ni Nino, Harris. Nino, go to bed, something like that. Veti uh, a la cama, uh, Nino. I don't have a bedtime. Listen, and I don't you a got curfew. a bedtime, Holmes. You got a bedtime. And you don't have a bed. Vetti. What do you mean I don't have a bed? I have a futon. You got a futon. What kind of futon you got? Well, you got black, like a like a, like a fluffy bed. one? I I'm telling you, show another map guy. What do you do when Lewis steals your bike? Run Vetti you know, a la Come on, come on, come on Time to go to bed, brother. Hey, listen. I'm not even going to go with the rest of the races, show. Come I on, Lewis. You. I love you, Luis. We'll see you tomorrow. Hasta mañana, son. Love you, bro love you, brother. Love you, senor. Okay. Love you, baby. You're my brother. Luis, you see you, man. You can, totally tell he's, you can totally tell where he's coming from, though. Like, the Miz is such a yeah, coward, man. I mean, he came out there, tried to not defend his title, man. Like, I mean, Luis is right. The Miz is a coward. I mean, what can you say? Thank and, you, too, uh, Luis. I mean... I don't know why Luis went yeah. into Spanish randomly. It was wonderful when he did. I, I really does like he when think he does... It's real? He thinks it's real, man. It's real to him. It's still, it's still real to him, brother. <laughs> like, the Miz is a coward. I, I see that a lot in comments, too. The Miz is a coward. He's been running from Bobby a lot. I'd like to see him try to get in the like. <laughs> <laughs> what know, the just... fuck? <laughs> My favorite part of the Monday Night Raw is the Monday Night Raw. Foo slash CK this SH slash shit. My A slash SS hole is hurting from watching this. Braun Strowman can sue slash CK Mighty slash CK. Foo slash CK Raw. What the hell? What in the world did Picharo just say? Um, he, he basically hates Raw. He crapped all over Raw, and he and he managed to swear and not, like using slashes so he could still get the <laughs> get his thing read. That's fucking hilarious, Picharo. I don't know. That's so weird, man. But Charo, thank you for the donation. Good to hear from you. There's a couple more coming in right now. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. D. Wells with the turkey. The tur there we go. Now it's fucking turkey time, forever. bitches. What if they filleted us? What if they killed us and ate our children? What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us? If they had to hate us? Audio en mis perros privados. Audio en mis perros privados. They eat our nuts and then they eat our butts. The turkeys ate us. What if, what if, what if the turkeys ate us? What if the turkeys ate us? Audio a mis perros privados. Audio a mis perros privados. Luis Antonio Alejandro. 
What if the turkeys ate us Instead of mashed potatoes Instead the turkeys ate us D. Welsh! It shall. You say it. You shall receive. Oh! A little battle going on between D. Welsh, the doxer, and Shell. Unbelievable. D. Welsh, the dox. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who did he dox again? Bullfrog. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot all Bro, that. I mean, drunk. I mean okay. dude, you know, Bullfrog did dox himself first, but still fucked up. <laughs> Yo, Zlion, what's up, man? Okay, okay. Let me at least explain about what happened last night when it came to, like, that show. I feel like before, like, the ending, I would say, like, it was a great show. But I'm not going to lie how much, like, that ending really, like, F everything up, though. But I do kind of, like, have, like, an idea what they should do on Wednesday, though. Like, they should basically, like, like Eddie Keeson and, like, the Booster and the Blade just go, like, ape shit. About, like, how Kenny made a joke about almost, like, losing his friend and shit. And, like, I don't know. like, how, like Well, did, oh, did you hear my shit. idea? Did you hear my idea from last night at all? Yeah, I didn't have time. I was, like, talking to others in Discord about that. Okay, so what I was... Di Wait, did you hear me, though? Or did you not hear it? No, I didn't hear you. Okay, yesterday. so what I said was... What my thing was, was what they should do is... Kenny Omega should come out and say, I I never planned for the ring to blow up. I, want, I, I just did that so that Moxley would make mistakes and rush, knowing that if the ring ends up blowing up, it doesn't matter. Because... Moxley, when the when the ten minute mark clicked and the music started playing, Moxley got oh my god, and he started. If you notice in the video on the pay per view, he started rushing with pins and stuff like that. And so I would have Kenny Omega play it off to like, dude, you idiot, this was never gonna blow up. You think I would blow myself up in the ring or even be in that kind of a dangerous predicament, like as a champion or whatever? And sort of played off like he's a dickhead and he lied the whole time and played uh, Moxley. And I thought that that was an easy, quick solution. And, and they could even played it off. But the thing that ruins that is the Eddie Kingston playing dead for like 10 hours. Well, you could say that he went into shock. Me and Jake yes. were talking about that. Shock, on the anxiety, podcast. anxiety yeah. attack. And, you know, I, I, I even cut the promo. I, I, I pretended I was Eddie Kingston. I was like, I got to take care of my mother. I think I'm going to lose her. And my friend, I think he's going to die. And now I'm in the hospital, and it was all a joke, all just a funny game to you, Kenny Omega, you know, this type of shit. And uh, basically that sets up Eddie to have a big feud with Kenny, you know, and Kenny thinks it's funny and, you know, whatever else. Well, how are they going to write off Moxley? Well, I think Moxley, uh, you're right, they may have to, they may have to, I mean, what do you think, guys? I mean, do you think they have to bring Moxley back now again for one more fucking execution? Seems that way. They didn't write him off TV on this, so what do they do now? They, they, that's why him getting up and cutting that promo was dangerous. They could have just sold the beating. They they did give him the one-winged angel with three guys slamming him through a chair. I mean, that was the conclusion of the match. All those V-triggers, the explosions that he dealt with already, and everything that he put his body through, he's bleeding. So they could have just said that that trauma to his head caused a severe concussion and he'll be out for months, and that would have been fine. But him cutting the promo, he has to come back now because it didn't take him out. That was supposed to write him off TV. That was supposed to be his demise. Like right. I already heard, earlier. the explosion was supposed to go off, excuse me, and then, and then Eddie was supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, an innocent bystander that was also injured, but that was his face turn. And this was supposedly going to write Moxley off for some time. So, Like I said earlier, Jake, we're going to see John Moxley like, oh, look, the former AEW champion is coming to the... Oh, my God, Kenny Omega and the two generic goons that hang out with them are attacking John Moxley in the parking <laughs> lot. And then John Moxley is going to be on the ground, and they're going to be like, well, it turns out that this minor attack in the parking lot will keep John Moxley off of television for seven months. He okay. <laughs> yeah. wasn't okay, injured like in the it, though. crucial pay-per-view like match. Oh, <laughs> no, go okay. ahead. I was, like, thinking, like, more of a scenario with, like, Kenny and them pretty much Chuck Mossy, like, freaking brutal and shit. Pretty much dumped that motherfucker in the car. 
Mm-hmm. I pretty much do like a fishing man and this actually gave us a fucking explosive. Right. You want your fucking explosion? Here's your fucking explosion, bitch. Yeah, yeah. He and you and now he can be like, you said I don't know how to build a ring, I don't know how to build an explosion. Maybe I fucking do, but this this one I'm gonna make sure you're the only one in it. But um he could do that or <laughs> Or you have Moxley just walk into somewhere and it blows up. That's what uh, window cleaning was saying in the chat too. I Literally would literally just have have Moxley go in somewhere and then boom it blows up. You know? I would just have, have Eddie, Omega shoot him. <laughs> have Eddie Kingston in the hospital from an anxiety attack or a, a heart attack. Uh, Eddie Kingston's in the hospital due to a heart attack he suffered panicking over thinking his friend was about to die. So Eddie mm-hmm. Kingston's asleep in the hospital from some kind of operation or he's in a coma. I think that'd be funny. And Moxley is by his side in the hospital, you know, looking over Eddie. And that's when, you know, you could have Kenny Omega and those guys jump Moxley in the hospital. And then they could, uh, they could do it to him in the parking lot of the hospital, whatever, throw him out the hospital window, third floor, second floor. That'd be funny. And make it a comedy angle. Yeah. Make it a murder, make it a murder. He's dead. And Eddie's had some really good matches recently. I mean, he had one <laughs> against that JD guy, you know. So uh, even the sportster is saying, like, AEW needs to salvage Eddie Kingston. That has to be their top priority. And I agree. They need faces, and this is something that, you know, w- the closing was was terrible. But that that was worth a damn. That really was him turning to be faced to save his, his former best friend, who he's feuded with since he made it to the company. Uh, Christ, I mean, that showed something. He didn't want his friend to die, so... It is a very unfortunate problem, but it is a very uh, glaring issue that they have to have to do something with. So I, I hope they they focus not just on Moxley here. They have to make Eddie look like a million bucks here. I hope. I can't well, see them not doing something with it. I'm kind of happy this happened, and because <laughs> it's because it's because. AEW, a lot of the people there, like the young bucks and. Just, you know, I, I can just imagine how fucking smug they are. Just like, we're the top of the world, we're the best wrestlers in the world. And then when some shit like that happens to them, I just I just want to see the look on their faces when something goes wrong. Because it's just like, I'm so tired of being told how great all these guys are, how great the elite is. And sometimes it is nice to see just people bash on them. Because they do, because, <laughs> like, you have to admit, they do get, like, a lot of, like... WWE could do something stupid. We attack everything about it. But like some these AEW guys put on these fucking forty five minute matches where they no sell ninety five knee strikes to the fucking jaw. But then I guess that's not ridiculous. I guess that's not worth trashing on. So it is nice to see finally after once in a while to see people being like this match sucked. This match was boring. Just like I think this is we're entering a time now where like the honeymoon phase with AEW's kind of faded and now people are going to start being a little bit more critical and a little bit less biased towards um wwe yeah i mean i, th- I think it is a, a big change sure. uh, yeah. SB know, nation man. had a hell of an interview not interview uh, article out today saying that AEW's botched explosion is a symptom of bigger problems it's a hell of a great read but they're right i mean like we said instead of you know over delivering and under promising they did the opposite i mean you had christian cage be the be the reveal he comes out says nothing signs and then leaves so it leaves a really bad taste in everybody's mouth i mean that was bad the botched explosion to close the night made everybody just feel disappointed sad and and then you hear the refund chance and then mm-hmm. like you said you know that the honeymoon it, it's been a while that they've been on and they've done things that haven't been great before but i think they knew they were going to i think they sent him out there like that because they knew they'd fucked up already I think they knew because they were going to have... Oh, really? Yeah, because otherwise he would have come out and cut a promo and gotten all hyped about what was coming up and stuff. And instead, I think it was just kind of like, look, here I am. It's me. All right, I'm out of here. Oh, oh, oh. You meant with Christian. Gotcha. Christian, yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought you meant they sent out Eddie because they no, fucked up. I was like, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, I got you. With Christian, yeah, I, I know. It kind of... And especially having his TNA theme, you know, that gave it away instantly. So that, that was kind of a, it wouldn't have been bad, like I said, but they just overhyped it and people, you know, got disappointed. Tony Khan's the like, I paid $30,000 for that theme. The, the ring no exploding, the ring exploding would have been so cool. Like back in the Attitude Era, imagine just like that happened. Yeah. And JR and everybody's going crazy. Like, oh! And like you see the you see the the clock is about to hit zero and just oh yeah. my god like jr yeah. just jr explosion. just be like good god almighty they're dead yeah, good just, god just, we've and, killed people here tonight 
<laughs> like, and 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 King's like, I don't know. I don't know. this happened. I don't know. And but now the fucking commentators now, like even the ones in AEW, are all like. Oh my god, I cannot believe that happened. The funniest yeah. thing was Excalibur trying to react and react and wait and like he was trying to react appropriately to the explosions. So he goes, Oh my oh and then like he's he, waiting. Yeah, because he didn't know Doo! how to react and he didn't want to say the wrong thing in case they came in on the headset and were like, Oh yeah, say that it was a dud or he didn't want to sell it and then have them be like, You idiot, you should have not said that it was because they always no, say he, Yeah, you know, he, he was waiting himself. Where's the big fucking yeah. And, exactly, and then so on the last one, he goes, "My bad. oh my god!" <laughs> and here's one thing that we're—I mean, we're still talking about this. That's how you know yeah. Raw is bad, and this is lasting. So at least yeah. they've got that going. This for This is them. better than Raw. But, it's but, but like the article said, they need to manage expectations. That's their biggest thing. But like yeah, we, we didn't bring this the up. Fuck out of everything. Yeah, out of everything. Everything, and we didn't say this either. But I, going back and rewatching it, I mean, you have the butcher, the blade, and the bunny, and the candlestick <laughs> maker, and all of them. They're on the stage. There's 19 seconds left when when Eddie hits the ring, and they the butcher the blade, they go eh forget it, and they leave Moxley and Eddie in the ring. So there's got to be fallout from that. But he got there with too much time left. Why wouldn't they have helped him with 20 seconds left? They all could have gotten down there, lifted Moxley, gotten him out. Okay, they don't want to get blown up. I get it, but there was enough time. So already they shouldn't have had him come out until 10 seconds left, even less. If they're going to have the beat down, forget the beat down. Just have him run out with not enough time so he has to get him, can't lift him, cover him. Because Wait. this looks stupid for the whole time he has to try and drag him out and say, you can't lift him? You, you've you lifted Moxley like a dead weight before in your matches. Now you yeah, can't do it come, to save how him? How come you can't do it now? Wait a second. That's the butcher. The barber. That's the butcher. <laughs> 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 <That's the> bu <laughs> oh we got the maker. God. The candlestick Don't maker's Chino? here. Don't mind if I do. What's my name? Don Cacino. It's a whole new game. Don Cacino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Remember when Vince wanted to put a blue dot on Christian Cage? Vince never respected <laughs> Christian, but we should be hyped. He is in AU. Trash. BD Chop and Screw, thank you for the $5. Yeah, man, listen. I forgot all about that. It's nice. That is true because he hated him so much he didn't want him to talk. He wanted to put a blue dot over his face. Oh, oh my, my God! God. That's, yeah. I, I remember hearing about that, and that was in I think Jericho's book or something. It's because I'm Christian looks like a carpenter. Like he looks like his career is a carpenter, not a wrestler. Why does Vince hate him so much? Because he looks like a Christian. carpenter. No, Christian looks like he, Christian's had some can go. Oh, he's had man. some damn good matches. Thanks, um, Angel, for uh, subscribing. Nice and wholesome. And he's a, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, yeah, right here, really he's quick. A damn, it was, he's a damn good baby face, too. He is. He I can be. But I, I just don't understand why he was treated so poorly in the WWE. They didn't like him. They the didn't see it. They never saw it, and that's the problem. I mean, you see right here, uh, Alex Greenfield, former WWE writer, says, right before I started, there was a big show. It might have been in Toronto. Christian was so completely over, and everybody thought he was going to get a push, I think, at the World Heavyweight Championship at that point. We were on the plane one time shortly after, and I stated, and Vince was like, God damn, I just don't like his face. His face really bothers me. I was like, he's ugly, Vince? And Vince says, no, it's not that he's ugly. It's just, I don't know. It's ratty. You know, what should we do? That Kennedy gimmick. And we're all like, what? So some Sion of the Kennedy fortune, I guess, got arrested for rape in the 90s at some point. When the woman was accusing him on the stand, all the networks put a blue dot over her face. was <laughs> 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 like, God damn, you know what we should do? We should take a blue dot and put it over his face whenever he comes out. <laughs> Can that's, you picture that? That's why I put him in the Los Conquistadores. This is also the flight where the oh, Spirit yeah. Squad idea was invented. This whole flight is just all bad ideas. <laughs> Dude, I'm high as shit, so that just completely destroyed me right now. Yeah. There's a whole legacy on wrestling fandom of Blue Dot Christian. They have videos of Blue oh Dots on his God. face. With his Titan Tron with the Blue Can Dot all over his face. It's Can hilarious. you imagine him coming out? <laughs> Blue dot over his oh my god i'm gonna die i love vince i told you man because i feel the same way about christian i feel the same way like it's he's something funny. weird I about all about I don't know. that I just don't like that him. now my god i wish i, I don't understand he's had some damn good ma watch his matches with randy orton back in 2011 see joe didn't see a lot of those matches, no i saw I that think. i saw 2011 i was here for did that. you but but a lot of his other stuff i don't you said you didn't see much of so well I, so 
as a singles wrestler. I, I've been watching. He was good in TNA for a while. I, I have watched wrestling since 1987, but I would say that the most wrestling I've ever missed in my life, the most wrestling I ever missed, like my least watched wrestling years, are 2003, four and five. So 2003, four and five are my least watched wrestling years. I probably he wasn't really doing anything in that time. Period, okay, so anyway. I really didn't miss much, I guess. I just um during the during those the 3 best. years, you know, I just I, I watched about half of those years, I'd say each one of them. Like off and on I was in and out during different things, always watch SummerSlam, always watch Rumble, always watch Mania, but I was banging I was having sex with women. You were just missing <laughs> yeah. the best parts of like the SmackDown era with like Angle yes. and Guerrero. 2003, and he was the Intercontinental Champion for quite some time. And then 2004, I believe, is when he had that feud with Jericho and Trish was involved. So Him he and had Jericho were tag champs. I missed yeah, a lot of they that. they broke up there. That was good. That was a good run when they yeah. split apart. The IC title run was good. Smoke weed every day. Full-blown heel tipped $4.20. Fuck Raw, fuck SmackDown, fuck Woman's Day. Aok and them rap bimbos can get shipped to Saudi and Jesus. beheaded. Real woman need acknowledgement Jesus. like Queen Lee as she knows her place. And Meghan Markle, thank God your baby ain't come out black like the Queen feared. Good God, full-blown heel. Oh, my well, God. thank you, full-blown heel. Full-blown. How come people have to take such issue to Women's Day? Like, I, Full-blown I racist. I get it. Like, yeah. But people who get so pissed off, like, oh, can you believe they said it was National Women's Day? It's like, who gives it? Are you ready for this? By the way, I saw Christian defend the ECW world title uh, against Great Khali in the social music circus while <laughs> Leah was pregnant in the year 2009. It was a five-star match. It was pretty good. <laughs> Trump is still your pop US tipped five dollars. Trump is still your president. They changed election laws at the last minute so that it would be harder for him to win F asterisk 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 cancel cancel culture and the left donate to save America Pac Louise is definitely any legal living off government. Thank you, Trump is still your <laughs> president. <laughs> Thank you uh, for the donation. Luis, I think he does have a a green card. I believe. I think I think Luis is legal. So no tiene sus papeles. Uh, he is legal, I believe. From what I understand, I spoke to him. His mother is not though. So if you want to round her up, go for it, Trump. You asshole. Um, or when, or when, Biden, when the, you asshole. Or Biden. <laughs> Bi actually, shit. Biden will probably be the one rounding him up. There's like seven thousand illegals crossing the shit every day. And Biden will probably touch her too. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. You know, and we're gonna find out. You know, if he will, he couldn't even deliver a speech earlier today. He was like falling asleep. Yeah, I don't couldn't think he's touched anybody if that's the case. So, did you see him earlier today? He couldn't yeah, even. Yeah, he fucking... was stammering, you know, stammering, stuttering. He couldn't remember whoever he was. You know, he couldn't remember uh, the secretary of from state. the military at that point. He couldn't remember the secretary of state. Yeah, he couldn't remember any names or anything. And, and you know, like I said, I'm terrible with names, but I'm not the president. So you might want to have that in front of you. You know, and I be mean, able to. Uh, Jake, I know you voted for him, but come on, dude. Like, Oh, I just, said he was, you know, I, I just dislike Trump to that much of an extent, you know? I, I think the, that's what they I want. I think the hate for Trump, the hate I, for I Trump is a little Biden's too crazy. I prefer Biden's stance on a lot of things compared to how I stood with Trump. So I, yeah, I wasn't I, like I, orange I man I bad. I, I lean more towards what Biden was doing for Medicare for, you know, <laughs> Do you ever a lot see of videos things. of him, though, and just, or just like. Oh, it's embarrassing, no doubt about it. It's 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 like, oh Christ. Listen, George Bush was the president for eight years and he was retarded. So I mean like yeah. what, you know, I mean it's really not that o crazy. Obama mm -hmm. was president for eight years and he like did nothing besides bomb people. I mean and, and, and cause and cause more of a divide between races than he ever. did do that. I mean that's what led to Trump. But it's um what we should have really when could we go back to a good president? Who would you say like 2028 when the rock is uh going into office. When when you no, like go back in time, who's the last good president? Is it JFK? Things weren't bad with Clinton until everything, you know, got bad in the yeah, end. Yeah, but Clinton so did all Reagan but, was a strong president whether you like it or not, and you know, the whole Iran Contra thing did kind of muddy up his well, no, his name because but, but Reagan he was a strong like yeah, no, but that still, he was, but he gave the it still he, ended in controversy. He gave Same the country with, away to the banks and ruined our whole economy. 
Yeah, the war on drugs, and I mean, there's a and lot the of war on drugs. Yeah, same thing yeah. Carter, same thing. I don't know. I'd go uh, back to JFK. The, I think it's JFK. He's vice president. JFK would have to be, and he it's was JFK. A, a He's the best to, president. He was a threat to the government, so they took him out. You know, Richard That's, Nixon was also pretty over for a while. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but dude, the way they the way they booked him at the end, you know, yeah, I didn't like, like that. I can't believe they turned him heel. <laughs> I know. Right? I would say Clinton, honestly, I think would be the last, you know, solid president. He did, but a lot Clinton and the Clintons did all this illegal, crazy, weird stuff behind the scenes that is terrible. I mean, it felt, yeah, no, it they felt they good though. Not good for the nation. It just, you know, you know, it, just felt, it felt good though. He too. felt he's like Putin. Like Clinton was like Putin, right? Putin is like probably like the best leader now, but he's sick. So it's like I wouldn't you, go that far, but I get your point. Yeah. Yeah, like, but like, I made a joke about that earlier. I said Putin better than Biden, but um, yeah, I I don't know, man. I think, but you know, but I do remember we were all pretty happy during Clinton, though. I will say that. Well, that's we're, what I'm saying. Unemployment was low, benefits. Were but up, again, maybe that was just the the media people all making it seem happy. You know, I don't know. Well, that was before everybody was crazy. That was when the liberal, the Democratic Party was just like was just another. It was like you know, parties weren't the end all be all of right. who you are as a yeah. You weren't defined. Person. Exactly. You I'm going back to JFK though, man. I'm going to JFK, you know? And then maybe like uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Like I don't know, like I mean like who else? Everybody else has been bear. scummy in some crazy way. Unless those guys did stuff, I don't know. Wasn't Eisenhower pretty good though too? Yeah, I don't know. I I'm too young. So. I don't know. I was literally gonna say I'm not that old, but I don't know enough about it. We don't even here's the thing. We we don't even know what what we can't even agree on what, what presidents are good from five years ago. So how the fuck could you expect to remember? Can you imagine that being yeah, exactly. like, what was Eisenhower like? What are you talking about? People make up their minds completely different on what Bush was like, and that was just fucking 18 years ago. You know what Things I mean? Things are so, so crazy now. They're trying to fucking cancel Abraham Lincoln, probably. <laughs> they are. They Lincoln. are trying to cancel <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. It's hilarious. Yeah, Patrice said something about that years ago. He's like, like, why the fuck? Like, this motherfucker freed the slaves. Now they got to tell us that this motherfucker was like a crazy person or something. <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> that, that he, was, doing it. he wasn't just, he was fighting slavery and the battle within his mind. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, Patrice is so fucking hilarious. Oh my god! I don't know if the I don't know if the guy was like a hero because he, like he sort of freed people, but it helped him in another way. So it's like I don't know if he's a fucking hero of the freeing the slaves, but. You know, I mean, the guy, the guy he wasn't fucking free. The, the guy wasn't gives a shit. He wasn't the guy on the other side trying to keep him fucking. You know, it's like, fuck it. Just accept it. He's yeah. like better than better than the other guy was. The other guy still had statues down in the south. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, bro. It's fucking hilarious. Anyway, uh, I don't, uh, before I we get don't out of agree here. with Abraham Lincoln. I, <laughs> honestly, what, what, what's he trying to say with that long beard? Is he trying to appropriate women? <laughs> Canceled. Yeah. Now Rip him out of the history books. Pretend he didn't. You have to pretend that he didn't exist like like Chris Benoit. Yeah, like, trying to end <laughs> slavery. He should have ended it sooner. Oh, Cancel my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe this. Oh, my God. They are going to cancel Abraham Lincoln. Guys, th happening. oh, my God. This just in. Somebody just told me. They said, listen, I, I said, we don't have any proof going back that Abraham Lincoln was really racist. All we know is that he freed the slaves. How could he be racist? He freed the slaves. But somebody just obtained video Evidence. from abraham Shit, lincoln mom? this is unbelievable just sing me a song you're the piano man sing me the song you're the piano cock james mesner i will i promise you but look at this we have we have actually video footage and it's not from the past it's video footage from the future proving he was a racist oh my god no yes sir. mr scott the charming negress oh <laughs> oh my god no no abraham lincoln no no not on woman's day yes mr scott the charming negress oh forgive me my dear <laughs> oh my god no abraham lincoln no oh, this is a travesty he was the last for hope. america oh god he was the last hope we there's no one there's no one now that can't be canceled. Four score and your mother's <laughs> Oh, Jake, what are you going to say? We'll get out of here. I freed the slaves like I freed your mother's pussy. You know, that's, oh, God. Four He's score. Now too. 
four score and going for some hangings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. One of the best tweets tonight was Randy Orton with the pyro behind him, and somebody said, check on Eddie Kingston, quick. <laughs> <laughs> he's having PTSD in the hospital. He's, he's going down. <laughs> How, how come Shane sounded like he was going to have a fucking heart attack earlier? <sighs> he was breathing harder than Bullfrog. I've said words. All I've... he did was walk out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and Braun put up. Before we leave, I wanted to say that Braun had a decent promo tonight, but he still looked like a fucking mongoloid. <laughs> He's still a fucking like a idiot. idiot. He looks like he eats socks. <laughs> He looks like he fucking eats paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks like Living he eats kids. Takes it off chips. the wall. <laughs> <He> <laughs> takes it off the wall, like, individually. Fucking broad. I like the, I like the color with crayons. D. Uh, Wells sent us in the, uh, the little JCS Diddle Cave um, the reaction from fans last night in attendance from AEW Revolution. And I'm telling you, watching it from their perspective, that finale of the explosive barbed wire death match is even more ridiculously insulting and Come underwhelming on, seeing friend. how they saw it let's oh hear it oh my god it's it's bad it's terrible Too sweet, baby. Oh. oh here it comes we get the countdown they get excited for eddie coming out they're like oh it's eddie You hear him. Butcher and Blader out there too. Like they're, you know, they're excited. We're gonna get help from Moxley. Here he comes. 18 seconds. This show Shock sucks. Factor's out the window, man. That is Shock. not good, man. No. Shock Factor's out the window. <laughs> I guess the only thing Keep working down. for them is that it, it's limited seating and they didn't have a sold out crowd. Yeah. I guess that's the only benefit because then it would have been a real raucous environment of booze. It would have been booze know. everywhere. Yeah. So I guess that's the only saving grace. But see how much louder it sounded. Like you could tell, they they were ready to turn the reaction down. The last only night. way they to save it would have only way to save it would have been to have Kenny come out and be like, "You all are stupid and everything." And this is what I did. They and should have had him have laughing the on the stage. Yeah, like why you did said. they just have a barbed wire steel like steel death trap match? Like just a big cage with barbed wire on it. Yeah, so, like who, who, they, they don't even really do the barbed wire ropes. They just wrap the ropes in a little bit of barbed wire. And there was a couple of cool spots where you saw Moxley like pulling the barbed wire out of his skin and his jacket. Yeah. And you know, we didn't get enough of that. That was what they needed. And or all like they had I to have said, exploding was the tables. one baseball bat they brought in. The one bat. Or like that I blew said up, earlier, that would have worked. Like I said earlier, have like a crazy death type death match from like CZW, where like they're bringing in like the light tubes and shit and. Just be like Kenny Omega, he cheats to win, and then he cuts a promo and says, I just proved that not only am I better than John Moxley at wrestling, but I'm better than him at hardcore wrestling. Because I'm the best in the world, or some shit like that. That's all yeah. you needed. Yeah. Why I have an explosive match. Who gives a shit? This is not This is what Kenny grew up on that he likes and he loves. But I mean, like, if you're going to do it, just do it all the way, man. Hey, yeah, we're out go of here. out. Stuff everything with fucking explosives. I mean, they should have had everything like ready to blow. Dress up like a lady. Dress up like another video game character, you fucking loser. Oh, no. Kenny Just Omega. Hey, Luke Rojas and Jake DeMarco have a podcast coming up on Patreon soon. Thanks, Jake. At Countdown ended on uh, Twitter. Luke R Rojas, thanks for being here, man. No problem. Kisses. Rostafa, what's up, brother? Good to hear from you. Here's a little bit of Harry Potter from us the other night. Oh, no. It's me, Dobby, calling the UFC fight again. Look at how Sterling's pelvis is. Oh, Sterling's pelvis is making Dobby horny. <laughs> <laughs> Dobby's a free elf to fuck anyone. Dobby's oh, getting around. Someone said, what do you Ken think Brown? they use those fucking wands for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh my god. Erectus Erectus Combustion. Erectus Cum Dumpster. Snake raped me. Oh my 
god, I'm gonna die, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't breathe oh my god dude i couldn't get it out i couldn't get it out i knew you'd finish it i'm just like you wrecked this fucking <laughs> i've come all over the sea uh, you wrecked this proboscis oh my god oh my god where do you think he got that fucking mark on his head from? <laughs> some, <laughs> some big black guy just sla Voldemort slapped his fucking giant dick across Harry's head. <laughs> that was Voldemort's cum shot. Oh, oh the Kedavra! Dobby's getting quite bored now with this fight as they play with each other. Is this the championship fight? Is this still the mid card? Is or no? This is a, this is title versus called. title. <laughs> it's me, Mister Gargadi. I found <laughs> Harry Potter's broken sock. <laughs> what did I tell you about getting out of the sex chamber? Dobby, come on, sorry. come back in here. Get back in here, Dobby. Come on, come on. Dobby is sorry it's... for the condition of Mister Potter's wand, but Dobby couldn't help it. He pleasured himself with Harry Potter's <laughs> wand. Dobby oh. is... <laughs> oh, Dobby. I, have, I, will now so, curse uh... you. I will now curse you with this. A reptile dysfunctionist. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh no, Dobby's penis has shrunk to one centimeter. Hagrid, get in here. Start filming. Please. Quiet, Harry! <laughs> How am I supposed to go tinkle now? Tinkle, well, tinkle. Well, you can always tinkle in my Dobby handle. shit, bro. What happened to your dick, Worst Dobby? Worst explosion since mm -hmm. the Doolit Un Undertaker. Um, I'm trying to think of what you're talking about. Jennifer Muppet, baby. What's up? Thank you for the $2 in Canada. I remember, um, I mean, Kane and Undertaker had great, like, little flare-ups. And they lit, you know, Undertaker on fire in the casket. That shit was awesome. I, I can't think of what, what you, which one you're talking about. But, man, I'll tell you, it was weird. I'm out of here, though, guys. Jennifer, thank you for the Muppet. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Grosio Erectionis. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Dobby is most grateful you returned his penis to regular size. Harry, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I'm yeah, you forget to take the pill. I feel so. <laughs> I forgot to take the pill. Abortion rigor mortis. Abortion in your clitoris. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> What the fuck is going on? Uh, now, yeah, a hell of a kids movie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this world exist, clothes, bro. Clothes hanger a ragadasi. I've never seen Harry Potter, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're gonna give me a heart attack. <laughs> oh, we did. Oh, yeah, because you're because you, Joe, Jesus, I didn't know Joe was a box of hostess. What the Harry fuck? Potter oh and the philosophers do. Oh <laughs> Fucking little Debbie. No, I can't. <laughs> Harry Potter in the chamber of breathe. BDSM. Oh my god. He <laughs> that magic wand away from me. Hey, oh, Harry Potter. I feel like there was like laughing gas in the room for a Harry second. Harry Potter <laughs> in the chamber of secretions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harry uh, Potter in the chamber of secrets. <laughs> a Harvey Weinstein story. <laughs> and yeah, Drew well. sells in a box of cheese on the side. Oh man! Oh. What the fuck, <laughs> dude? <laughs> What the fuck? Wow. If that I was, was the high, biggest out of fucking, <laughs> I give you points for fucking just at least trying. I don't know what the fuck for. <laughs> oh, that's the second time tonight I've laughed so hard I've got tears. <laughs>
Oh, fuck. Oh! That was... Yeah, oh, my God. Such a cool nah. setup yeah. in the basement. You're not even allowed to smoke there. Fucking... <laughs> I want to see this world exist, Close, bro. Close hangar of Rakadasi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> I've never seen Harry Potter, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna give me a hard time. <laughs>